quarterback situations, and it's question marks for both coming into the bowl game. Rob Stone is with us this afternoon as well, and he has more. Well, Vaughn Charlton began under center this season for Temple, but the last four games he started on the bench due to a rash of turnovers. But Al Golden told me in pregame today, he said, guess what? He's earned the right to start again today due to his bowl preparations, improved footwork, improved decision-making. Now for UCLA guys, redshirt freshman Kevin Prince suffered an AC sprain and a mild shoulder separation in their late November loss at USC. His status really was in doubt until he started throwing pain-free and on the run this week here in the very cold of D.C. We talk about the cold. Yeah, it's easily in the low 30s. Wind gusts kicking up earlier today up to about 40 miles per hour. It's blowing right now. They're talking about feel temperature. What's the term, Brian? Feels like temperature, right? It's, it's going to be one of those days where it's hard to talk. Feels like temperature in the high teens, and obviously that is going to affect both quarterbacks, particularly one with an injured shoulder. Well, both quarterbacks woke up this morning and shed a tear when they saw the wind advisories at 30 mile an hour. It's not, not going to be easy to throw the football, and the kickers will have a hard time kicking the ball as well. You can see Al Golden. He also coaches the special teams for Temple. He didn't even have a jacket on. Now, there is a guy that grew up in the Northeast, played at Penn State for Joe Paterno. These temperatures don't bother him one bit. Forget the jacket. Just put the tie on. Give me the headset. I'll run out there with my guys. The last time Temple played in a bowl game was the 1979 Garden State Bowl. They actually beat Cal in that game at the Meadowlands in New Jersey, but a chance to cap their first winning season since 1990 with a game against a Pac-10 team on national television. I know Al Golden likes the weather conditions as well. He's from the Bill Parcells School of Football, playing in the Northeast. We want it cold. We're going to run the football and play good defense, and that plays into their hands today. Already you can see the wind a factor as the ball blows off the tee. UCLA, by the way, won the toss and elected to defer their option to the second half. So Jeff Locke will be kicking it off for Rick Neuheisel in his second year at UCLA. And he spoke about how important he thinks their appearance in this bowl game is to his program as well. And this game doesn't just mean something to Temple. We'll talk about what this game could mean to the future of UCLA as well. Matt Brown and James Nixon back deep to receive for the Owls. And we are underway in the Eagle Bank Bowl and this one sends way deep into the end zone Matt Brown will take a knee and Vaughn Charlton nine touchdowns and nine interceptions this season will come out and lead the Temple offense and it's a Temple offense that Brian really the strength of which is their run game 23rd overall in the nation averaging a little over 192 yards rushing per game uh, and that's how they really dominated the Mac going seven and one in conference play and Vaughn Charlton doesn't have to win the game for the Temple Owls he has to manage it and make sure that they don't have any negative plays or turnovers and they'll have a chance in this football game play action on first down Open man up the sideline for about a five-yard gain. Joe Jones makes his first catch as we take a look at the starters for Temple offensively. And it's a great offensive line. In terms of the MAC. all five players honored with all MAC selections. The right tackle, Darius Morris, a first-team all MAC selection. Bernard Pierce. Second team freshman All-American. His first carry. A little stop-start cut back out across the 30-yard line and a first down for the Owls. Sheldon Price came up and made the stop for UCLA defensively, but a gain of six for Bernard Pierce as we take a look at the UCLA defense anchored by Brian Price. 22 and a half tackles for loss this season. The Bosworth brothers at right defensive end and at the weak side linebacker position. And Akeem Ayers, honorable mention all Pac-10, but he really came on the last three games of the season. He had four sacks and seven and a half tackles for loss in the last three games of the regular season for UCLA. Play action for Charlton on first down. Well protected, looking for the home run into double coverage and a catch made. James Nixon has it all the way down to the 25-yard line. Temple came out and attacked early in this game. Run the ball with 
Pearson come back with hard play action and just a great job of adjusting to that ball by Nixon. Looks like it got caught in the wind, came back, and a good job of flipping his hips, making the catch. Big play early in the game for Temple. Sheldon Price, the true freshman cornerback for UCLA, never adjusted to the ball in the air. Didn't realize it was coming down. Here's Pierce, and he gets shut down right at the line. Jersey Sawerski making the stop as we take a look at the UCLA impact players defensively. Really impressive defense for UCLA, and Akeem Ayers is a sophomore linebacker. He's a spark plug of this defense. He's young, talented, and explosive. He's got four sacks and two interceptions. Corner Altron Werner will be playing in Sundays next year. He's a tremendous player, and Raheem Moore has become the leader on defense, leading the nation in interceptions. Second down run for Pierce, and he's cut down at the line of scrimmage, so it will be third down and 10 from just outside the 25-yard line. We talked with Matt Rule, the offensive coordinator for the Temple Owls this week, and he said a key for them is they want to use play-action pass to get big chunks of yardage. Run the ball with Pierce on first and second down, but also mix in that pass, and that's what you saw early in this drive, going downfield over two aggressive safeties for UCLA. On third and 10, the motion man is Joe Jones. Charlton to his tight end. He's got it inside the five, into the end zone. A touchdown for Steve Maneri. A great start for Temple. Here's a tight end, Maneri. He's going to run a corner route. Watch the location of this football as it's put right on his face mask where he has to has to catch it and a good job getting in the end zone six foot six 280 pounds he's going to have a distinct advantage on the on the safeties for UCLA today. Brandon McManus on for the point after. And it's good. 7-0. The Owls have the lead. Vaughn Charlton, his 10th touchdown pass of the season. Second touchdown catch for Steve Maneri. What a start for the Temple Owls. Welcome back to a bowl game for the first time since 1979. The Owls have the lead. Oh, thank goodness you're back. What's going on, sir? We're slammed. Tons of people interested in all the money they could be saving by switching to Geico. Yeah, of course. Boy, did we miss you last week. That temp wasn't working out at all. Took me all morning, but I got those quarterly figures for you. Oh, he ate all my mints. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Most people make resolutions based on what they see on the outside. This year, focus on what's inside and let Cheerios help tackle your cholesterol. Now you could win a free box to get started. Look, I don't want to work forever. And we need to figure this out now. Our nest egg took a real hit. What's that website your friend mentioned? Retirementredzone.com. That's it, from Prudential. Yeah, she talked to her financial advisor about what she learned there. Said it really helped her get back on track. Oh, I like that. Help get your plan back on track. Watch our educational video at retirementredzone.com. The site for the critical years before and after retirement. Maybe I can retire after all. <laughs> now you're talking. Click retirementredzone.com, then talk to your financial professional. Mark, we have teams on both coasts that are interested, but Milos only wants to play for Dallas. Milos really wants to play for Brussels. Milos only wants to play for Shanghai. Buenos Aires. Frankfurt. Paris. Milos really wants to play for Rome. How's your Japanese? We know why you fly. We're American Airlines. Welcome to the nation's capital and the Eagle Bank Bowl. Eagle Bank is committed to public service and we honor our American heroes. The Washington Convention and Sports Authority and Washington, D.C. are proud to host the Eagle Bank Bowl, benefiting the Wounded Warrior Project. When our veterans rehabilitate and transition, Wounded Warrior Project provides needed support, programs, and services 
Thank you for your support and enjoy the game. With four games left in the regular season, number 12 in red, Vaughn Charlton was replaced by number seven in red, Chester Stewart at quarterback. Stewart started the last four games. We expect to see him at some point today as well and went three and one. But Charlton, according to Al Golden, a little uncomfortable with the success of their intermediate passing game. They made the quarterback switch. Well, Charlton got them to switch back, and he leads a touchdown drive to start for Temple. Terrence Austin. Kickoff return out to about the 28 yard line. And so now a chance for the redshirt freshman Kevin Prince. A shoulder injury that he suffered against USC. Brian limited him in a lot of the practices leading up to today's bowl game, but he's been medically cleared over about the last week to really go full strength, and here he is getting the start today. And a similar injury to what Sam Bradford from Oklahoma had, not quite as severe. A month off really gave him an opportunity to heal up, and he's going to. Have to make some plays in this football game if UCLA is going to move the football against a good Temple defense. End around. Terrence Austin caught for a loss of a couple of yards back to the 26. Andre Neblet came up to make the stop as we take a look at the offensive starters for UCLA and. Xavier Suafilo a true freshman left tackle that they think is going to be a great one for the Bruins. Logan Paulson a go to tight end as well Prince over the middle tipped ball almost intercepted Alex Joseph had a chance at a pick it'll be third down and 12. Well he had Prince had the receiver wide open down the middle of the field you're going to see he just short arm just went a little bit and Joseph the linebacker should have intercepted that football but number four Austin was running down the field wide open a little bit of jitters early in this game for Prince and Keep an eye on him as the game goes on. He needs to make some plays, as we said. Prince on third and 12. Steps up, tucks it under. He's going to try and run for it. And muscles his way to the sticks for a first down. Alex Joseph was out there eventually to bring him down, but Kevin Prince, looking like a running back, runs for 14 yards. And a big play for Prince. You know, first throw of the game is Aaron's. Now he drops back. Nobody open. Good decision. He sees a hole, makes a shallow cut, gets upfield, and that'll do a lot for his confidence. And off to Shane Moline for about two, maybe three yards. If you take a look at the Temple defense. Muhammad Wilkerson made that stop, and he's a first team all Mac defensive tackle. He had nine tackles for loss and seven sacks. John Haley, a former walk on at outside linebacker, part of a walk on program that Al Golden champions and first team all Mac in the secondary is Jarrett. Paulson breaks a tackle, gets to the 45 yard line where it will be third down and five. A lot of intensity on the Temple side of the field early in this football game. Both on offense and defense, they have come to play. It's been a long time since they've been in a bowl game, and they are excited to be here. Wouldn't rather be anywhere else than right here, right now, without Golden leading. Shotgun for Prince on third and five. Swings it out to Malene. And he is rattled down at the 44 yard line. Marquise Liverpool was the first man there for Temple. A lot of questions coming in whether Temple could live up to the talent and athleticism and speed of UCLA. They are making a statement earlier in this game with the physical nature of their play, and Liverpool came up and laid the wood on that one. Delano Green back deep to receive the punt. Jeff Locke gets it away. Goes to the turf. No flag comes out. Green from the 18 yard line. Out to about the 23. So Temple not only scores on their opening drive, but they stop UCLA at midfield and they have the football back. 
early moments of the Eagle Bank Bowl. Log on today and save on thousands of products to fill any room in your house. And come to Overstock.com to enter our hybrid holiday sweepstakes, your chance to win a Toyota Prius. Overstock.com, at home with the O. Hey, Ham, what do you think the fine is for streaking? I don't know, like three, four hundred bucks? Why? <laughs> you stink! Sorry. The more you save on insurance, the more you'll have for football. Are you in good hands? <laughs> If you've had a heart attack caused by a completely blocked artery, another heart attack could be lurking, waiting to strike. A heart attack caused by a clot, one that could be fatal. But Plavix helps save lives. Plavix, taken with other heart medicines, goes beyond what other heart medicines do alone to provide greater protection against heart attack or stroke and even death by helping to keep blood platelets from sticking together and forming clots. Ask your doctor about Plavix, protection that helps save lives. People with stomach ulcers or other conditions that cause bleeding should not use Plavix. Taking Plavix alone or with some other medicines, including aspirin, may increase bleeding risk, so tell your doctor when planning surgery. Certain genetic factors in some medicines, such as Prilosec, may affect how Plavix works. Tell your doctor all the medicines you take, including aspirin, especially if you've had a stroke. If fever, unexplained weakness, or confusion develops, tell your doctor promptly. These may be signs of TTP, a rare but potentially life-threatening condition reported sometimes less than two weeks after starting Plavix. Other rare but serious side effects may occur. Inventors, do you have an idea for an invention or a new product? InventHelp can help you try to patent your idea and submit it to companies. InventHelp is America's largest invention company with sales offices in over 50 cities nationwide. Call today for your free information. ESPN College Football, the Eagle Bank Bowl, is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And Eagle Bank, we're listening. A frigid day here in Washington, D.C. Happy holidays at the Eagle Bank Bowl. Bob Schusen and Brian Greasy watching Temple take the early lead on UCLA. And now they have the football back. And they go to the ground attack, and Matt Brown. Boy, Brown's hard to find. Well, Temple is 112th in America throwing the football coming into today. You wouldn't know it from their first drive. Uh, and talking with offensive coordinator Matt Rule, he said he wanted big chunks, so five or six of those kinds of plays, and it set up a play action. And then the, the touchdown to tight end Maneri, a great throw from Charlton. Anticipation right there was the key to that play. As he threw that ball before the tight end came out of his break. Play action. Charlton rolling, fires to the sideline. Wide open man is Michael Campbell. And he's very close to a first down. The more that we see Temple come out and throw the ball successfully off of play action early in the game, it will open up lanes for Pierce in the running game. I was going to ask you what philosophically this does to UCLA defensively when you see a team come out and throw it around as much as Temple has. Well, they have to honor the pass. I know coming into the game, they talked about stopping Pierce in the running game for Temple, which averaged over 200 yards per game the last six games of the season. They had to take that away, but Temple's shown that they can throw the football, and like we said, that'll open up lanes for Pierce in the running game. Play clock down to three. Play clock at one as Charlton gets the playoff and gives to Pierce. Still on his feet, Bernard Pierce. Still moving the pile to midfield. Finally goes down at about the 48-yard line of UCLA. And there you see the effects of throwing the ball successfully early in the game. Let's look inside and see what happens to Brian Price. They're all American. He's the one that's got to stop the run game inside. He gets pushed out and opens a huge hole for Pierce. This offensive line for Temple returns five starters from a year ago, and they are big, over 300 pounds each of them. They are more than capable of playing with UCLA. A reverse. Hobbled by Nixon right back to Charlton. And now he flips it up the soft line, and Nixon drops it. A lot of razzle-dazzle to end up with second down and 10. Well, 
you haven't been to a bowl game in 30 years you might as well pull out all the stops but I don't know about the design on that play I thought it was a great job by Charlton at least managing the situation they wanted to throw the ball down the field but he got dropped it off to Nixon who was open could have had a positive game but he dropped it. I think they drew that one up in the dirt. Midway through the first quarter, play clock down to five. Second down and ten for the Owls. Play clock at one. End around. Green tries to turn the corner. And he runs a long way to pick up two yards. It'll be third down and eight. The strength of this Temple group is certainly the offensive line. Yeah, we talked about this offensive line. They are big, all over 300 pounds. And you see four out of five are all Mac. The right side of that offensive line with Madison and Morris, those are the two leaders. But they have been tremendous all season. In fact, they were voted the offensive team MVP a couple of weeks ago at their awards dinner, and rightly so, opening up all the holes for Bernard Pierce. Third down and seven. Out of the shotgun, Charlton swings it to Brown. And he goes down. Now to Ron Werner, a second team All-American at corner, comes up to make the stop. And that will force Temple to punt the football. Now, Temple punting the football could be a little bit of an adventure, as Jeff Watney, who is their punter, was sent home yesterday for a violation of team rules. So we weren't sure who we were going to see come out and punt and it's going to be Jake Brownell who's a senior normally the backup place kicker but he is going to be forced to punt the football today as Temple is without their normal kicker Brownell sends one end over end bouncing to Austin returnable from the seventh there goes Terrence Austin at the 40 all the way down to the 46 yard line of the Owls. And a big a big change of events here for UCLA with the return by Austin. Austin's a four year starter here at UCLA and has returned a bunch of kicks. In fact he's third in UCLA history in all purpose return yards and he gets a lane right there a good tackle by Elijah Joseph to save the touchdown but changes field position for UCLA and with a struggling redshirt freshman quarterback to have the ball in Temple territory as opposed to being inside your own five yard line is a huge turn. Terrence Austin is now second all time to only Maurice Jones Drew in all purpose yards for a career at UCLA he has set up his offensive teammates first and ten in plus territory. Prince looking for the bomb down the sideline for Rosario. Bobbles it. Has it. End zone. Touchdown Bruins. for the Bruins to get back into this football game with a big punt return and a, a great throw and catch even better catch by Rosario to get in the end zone. No such special teams worries for UCLA. They've got Kai Forbath who won the Luke Rosa Award this year out to attempt the extra point and he is right down the middle. UCLA and Temple tied at seven. Big plays for both teams. Here's the latest for the Bruins. And Nelson Rosario has reminded a lot of people in Los Angeles of one J.J. Stokes. Pretty good. Red Bull, New Year, no limits. New Year's Eve on ESPN. There was the explosion. And I remember just opening my eyes and it got both of my legs. I had surgery after surgery and I'm What's going to happen next? The Wounded Warrior Project said, look, brother, everything's going to be OK. Three months from now, four months from now, a year from now, you'll be fine. I don't know if I would be as well adjusted as I am now if it wasn't for them. To learn more, call 1-877-832-6997 or visit woundedwarriorproject.org.
It's the best week of the year. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN. Tonight at 8, Miami battles Wisconsin. Tomorrow at 8, Arizona takes on Nebraska. Hey, babe. So are we ready? Almost. I got you a little something. Oh. Hey, babe. So are we ready? Almost. I got you a little something. Not too heavy, not too light. Bud Light. The difference is drinkability. Let me fix that zipper for you. Oh, oh, oh. We're good. Oh. Now playing on DirecTV Cinema. Oh, Four friends. Where are you guys? We lost dog. Three friends. And we're the three best friends that anybody could have. And one night they'll never forget. What is this? That is my tooth. Why do you have that? From the director of Old School. Trust me, kids. You do not want to be sitting on these benches. <laughs> The Hangover. Movies playing on channels 125 through 199. Nelson Rosario is a track star. Not only at high school, but also at UCLA in 2009 in the Pac-10 Outdoor Championships back in the spring. He was third in the long jump, tenth in the high jump. That's pretty good when you're six foot five going up against a 5'11 corner as he just did with Marquise Liverpool. Rosario won the battle a long touchdown pass of 46 yards for UCLA and the Bruins are on the board we're now tied at seven Matt Brown from the goal line Brown out close to the 30 yard line before he's brought down let's go back another look at the touchdown. Yeah, Temple decides to come with a blitz here with a will and the free safety are both going to blitz. The play is made by the fullback, Sean Moline, to come up, pick up the free safety on the blitz, stone him at the line of scrimmage and allow Prince a pocket to throw the football. And then a great throw, and Rosario just takes over with his height and athleticism. But that play was made successful by Sean, Shane Moline, the uh, senior fullback, an emotional leader of the UCLA offense. The toss sweep to Pierce on first down. And UCLA stretches him out. No gain on first down. Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN Wednesday. A pair of games, first at 4.30 Eastern. Bowling Green will meet Idaho in the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl. And then at 8 Eastern, number 20 Arizona will take on number 22 Nebraska in the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN360.com. A good doubleheader. Comes your way tomorrow. Temple likes to use a no huddle offense. They're not, it's not a staple of, of, a, of a East Coast system, a parcel system, but they like to be in the right play at the right time. Pierce tries the other side this time. Nothing there. Lost a couple of yards. And there's Brian Price. Upfield to make. Another tackle for loss and when you say East Coast offense, what do you mean? Well, we asked this is a term that Al Golden has coined it It's about the parcel system of power offense for the Northeast with the Giants Tom Coughlin what he did in Boston College a lot of multiple tight end sets running the ball from wing and then that deep play action pass Which we've already seen early in this game. That's how they want to attack run the ball deep play action play good defense Third down and 12, a dump off. Pierce makes the catch. And he's close to a first down. Right at the 40 yard line. That might be good enough for a first down for Temple on third and 12. And Temple has, early in this game, been tremendous on third downs. The touchdown uh, play was on third and 10. This is a third and 12, and just a good job by Charlton of buying some time and then floating the ball out to Pierce who only has five catches on the year for a total of six yards hasn't been a real weapon in that respect but right there gets the first down and continue to move the chains. Play action Charlton flips one to a wide open tight end slipping and falling though is Evan Rodriguez picked up about four yards. Temple at nine and three on the season, seven and one in the MAC East, tied for first in their division. 
And as we said, their first winning season since 1990, their first bowl appearance in 30 years since the 1990s, 1979 Garden State Bowl. So just to play on this stage is such a tremendous accomplishment step forward for a program that was always in the Northeast, really the dregs of college football. Up the middle goes Matt Brown. Shows some strength. About a yard shy of the first down to midfield. It's the Eagle Bank Bowl here at RFK Stadium in Washington, D.C. Temple taking on UCLA. I'm Bob Oshusen alongside Brian Greasy. We're glad that you can be with us. Both teams trading big plays offensively here in the first quarter and trading touchdowns as well. Third down and a yard and a half for Temple to try and keep this drive alive. So important for Temple to be in third and manageable situations and have efficiency on first down so that they can use the run or the pass and convert in these third and short situations. Pierce close to a first down, and it sets up a very important early decision for Al Golden. He's a yard shot, fourth down and one as Corey Bosworth made the stop. You go for it from midfield? I don't think so. I think he's going to punt. I think he realizes that in this game, he is going to be able to compete with UCLA. It was important for Temple to come out and establish that early in this football game, and he realizes that it's going to be a 60 minute fight. He doesn't need to win the game here in the first quarter. Give his guys a chance to compete for 60 minutes with the Bruins, and, and they may win. Of course, your backup place kicker is your punter because Jeff Watney, as we said, the regular punter for Temple, sent home because of a violation of team rules. Another wobbly kick from Jake Brownell. Austin waves his teammates away from the football, and it will roll dead inside the 10 down at about the 8 yard line. So Brownell more than does his job there. UCLA got in business offensively on their last drive because of a big punt return. Not so here. All right, and if losing their punter, there's going to be a lot of short punts with rolls, and UCLA can take advantage of that, and, and they did right here with Rosario on the very next play, getting into the end zone and establishing some confidence for Kevin Prince who looked a little bit shaky early in the game. We know how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> Rob Stone, our reporter down on the sideline, calls Tampa home, and here he is in sub freezing temperatures. Moline breaking tackles. Shane Moline all the way out to about the 30 yard line. <laughs> well, I tell you what, you have a good block for a touchdown throw on the last series, and they're going to reward Shane Moline. And when he gets the football, he is a load. And he just absolutely just demolishes the safety coming up to make the tackle. Tremendous, tremendous strength from Shane Moline. He's been a fullback most of the year and just got a few more carries in the last two games. And they like the way the presence and physical nature he brings. Moline with blockers out in front. So about the 34 yard line. Dominique Harris made the stop. And let's take a look at the impact players for this Temple defense. Well, Temple has played well in the MAC and they've been led by Adrian Robinson. He's just a sophomore, but he was a defensive player of the year in the MAC. Their senior, Andre Neblet. He's the captain of this defense and we're part of the original recruiting class of Al Golden. He's been a tremendous leader for them. And then Jaquan Jarrett was all Mac first team in the secondary. He's become a playmaker. It's his 31st start today in the secondary for the Temple Owls. Damian Thigpen now in the game for UCLA at tailback on second down and six. This will throw it down the sideline, has a man incomplete. Looking for Taylor Embry, but led him just a bit too far. Yeah, this is the traditional uh, stick route from the West Coast offense and Norm Chow. You're going to see they're going to run an out route here, and the receiver's going to go up. It's too deep coverage. They've got to protect the hole as a defense, and he tries a th the hole shot on the outside. A good throw, just a little bit out of the reach of, of Rosario. But Norm Chow identified that as a weakness of this Temple defense, the hole on the outside and too deep coverage for Temple defensively. Paulson in motion on third down at six. Four-man rush for the Owls. Under some pressure and going down at the 26-yard line is Kevin Prince. 
first sack of the afternoon for the Owls, and Adrian Robinson was the first man there. That's his 13th sack on the season in the top 10 in the country. That takes us to the end of the first quarter, and what a way for Temple to end the opening quarter. You got to stay out of third and long situations, otherwise both these defenses are very capable of getting to the quarterback. Away from your TV for Capital One Bowl Week? Watch it live online at ESPN360.com. Sodexo takes care of you. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Hi, is uh, Denise working? Yeah, she's in the back. Can I take your order? I'm just a little bit more comfortable ordering with Denise. Bye. Hey, hi. You remember me? I came by yesterday and gave me that five-layer burrito. That new one for... Um... 89 cents. Is that cool? Is that still cool? It's an inside deal for everyone. Layers of seasoned beef, cheddar cheese, and a hidden layer of nacho cheese sauce. It's Taco Bell's new beefy five-layer burrito for just 89 cents. Why pay more? If you think about it, this is a lot like most job search sites. They let everyone in, so the best people can't stand out. Join the Ladders.com, the premium job site for only 100K plus jobs and only 100K plus talent. Every day. It's not just a job, it's like a way of life. Hey, you keep my daddy out of this. My family won't back down. It's like a day-to-day -day treasure hunt. I think life without risk is mediocre. Yeah. What's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen? Are you or a loved one addicted to drugs or alcohol? I'm Chris Prentice of the Passages Addiction Cure Center in Malibu, California, where every day we cure people of their dependency. Passages is not a 12-step program, and we do not believe in the disease concept. My book, The Alcoholism and Addiction Cure, shows you exactly what we do at Passages so you too can save a life that's worth saving. To get my book delivered to your doorstep, call 888-THE-CURE or go to PassagesMalibu.com. conditions here at RFK in Washington and we start the second quarter of the Eagle Bank Bowl with UCLA kicking it back to Delano Green and Temple and Green will let the ball bounce at the 30 yard line and fortunate that it immediately hit a UCLA player so it will be killed there and let's go down in the balmy conditions to Rob Stone. <laughs> yeah balmy right uh, hey you guys remember growing up playing youth sports right the, the fields never used to be all that great and there would always be kind of be a, an uphill and a downhill part of the field well right now Temple is going downhill they have the wind at their back and it makes a huge difference when you start talking about field goals talk to Al Golden pregame he said it's about a 10 yard difference between going the way Temple is going right now as to where they were going in the first half which means or the first quarter which means they can get it to the 35 yard line they will start thinking about a field goal they had to get all the way to the 25 in the first quarter to even Mall kicking the field goal all right Rob thanks very much great point about how field position affected by the wind in this stadium today to the ground and Pierce and he is stopped behind the line Akeem Ayers came up 
and made the stop. And Brian, as good as Temple has been this season, as great a year as they had, this is a different level of athlete that they're playing against defensively today for UCLA. Well, it certainly is. And, you know, no disrespect to the MAC, but uh, UCLA and the Pac 10 is not the MAC. And uh, you go back to the Penn State game that Temple played early in the year, they really got handled, manhandled, losing by three touchdowns. And uh, it's important for them to establish early that they can compete in this game. Little wheel route up the sideline. Pierce breaking tackles. And he's only about three yards shy of the first down. Akeem Ayers again there to make the tackle. And Ayers looks like he was shaken up, lost his helmet, and very slow to get up. A very questionable throw there by Charlton late uh, on a swing pass. You never want to be late on a swing pass because you can get uh, your star running back absolutely killed out there on the on the edge. A great catch by Pierce who's made two catches in this game now uh, but then to break three tackles and get six yards. Tremendous play. Akeem Ayers honorable mention all pack 10. He'd be a tough guy for this defense to lose. He made one of the plays of the year in college football back earlier on in the season in October against Oregon Oregon quarterback Nate Costa back of the end zone trying to throw it away and Ayers somehow not only picks it off right up against the back of the end zone but got his feet down inbounds and scored a touchdown. It was one of the most athletic plays I think I've seen a defensive player make this year. Oregon won the game. That was the only touchdown that UCLA would score in that game. That's a that's a quarterback's nightmare right there. How does he get up and catch that ball and then get his feet down inbounds? Yeah, that is that is an unbelievable play. You know, we were talking with Matt Rule, the offensive coordinator for Temple, and he said that Akeem Ayers is the best defensive player linebacker that they have played this season. So uh, he is going to be a special player, only a sophomore. Third down and three. Charlton under some pressure and he'll go down. Back at the 29 yard line. First sack of the day for the UCLA defense and Dayton Jones comes up with his fourth sack of the year. Yeah just a, a straight rush on the outside. They tried to block Jones with a, a halfback and missed the cut and it was an easy sack for Jones. But again third and long situations you allow the defensive linemen and defensive ends to really tee off in the pass rush and neither of these teams wants to be in anything more than third and six or seven yards because they're going to have a hard time blocking these guys. Just getting a punt away was Brown out. And it takes a slight temple roll to the 35 yard line of the Bruins and for the first time this afternoon from the Eagle Bank Bowl here in Washington. Let's go back to our studios and check in with Reese Davis. Reese. Guys, hope you're staying warm there. It is time for a bowl update brought to you by Flomax. And we got a bowl doubleheader on this day. Later on tonight, we'll check in on the Champs Sports Bowl. It'll be Miami taking on Wisconsin. Both teams trying to win their 10th game. Miami's offense has been explosive. Ja'Cory Harris, despite a lot of interceptions, tied for the most among starting quarterbacks, also has 34 pass plays at 25 or more yards. John Clay's 14th in the nation rushing for Wisconsin, but the average down about 50 50 yards per game in two games against ranked teams. So we'll see who can get the offense going without the mistakes tonight in the Champs Sports Bowl. Here's the men's room marathon. Going over and over. Now the night game. Waking up to go. These guys should see their doctors. Those could be urinary symptoms due to BPH, an enlarged prostate. But for many guys, prescription Flomax reduces their urinary symptoms due to BPH in one week. Only your doctor can tell if you have BPH, not a more serious condition like prostate cancer. When taking Flomax, avoid driving or hazardous tasks until you know how Flomax will affect you, as a sudden drop in blood pressure may occur, rarely resulting in fainting. Tell your doctor about all medications you take. If considering cataract surgery, tell your eye surgeon you've taken Flomax. Common side effects are runny nose, dizziness, and decrease in semen. Ask your doctor if Flomax is right for you. For many men, Flomax can make a difference in one week. Most people make resolutions based on what they see on the outside. This year, focus on what's inside and let Cheerios help tackle your cholesterol. Now you could win a free box to get started. New Year's is almost here. Celebrate with the best Disney movie since The Lion King. Thank you, thank you. Disney's The Princess and the Frog. Ready G. You will enjoy. I guarantee. Now playing. 
The UFC is kicking off 2010 with a card stacked full of knockout kings. When former light heavyweight champ Sugar Rashad Evans takes on jiu-jitsu black belt Tiago Silva and British striker Paul Daly battles submission specialist Dustin Hazlett. Plus heavyweight phenom Junior Dos Santos against pride sensation Gilbert Ivo. Bayonetta presents UFC 108 Evans vs. Silva. Live Saturday, January 2nd from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. You value your friends. So does DirecTV. Bob's worth 100. So are Carrie, Anne, and Sue. For every friend you refer to DirecTV, you get $100. And they get $100 on top of our new customer offer. Just give your account number to your friends and have them call 1-877-4100 each. They must have your account number when they order. This offer is only good for a limited time. So hurry, then celebrate and watch the Benjamins stack up. The sack by Dayton Jones sets up UCLA in a 7-7 tie here in the Eagle Bank Bowl after the punt. Pretty good field position for the Bruins. First and ten as they run the option from their own 35. The pitch out to Jonathan Franklin. And he's brought down after a gain of three. Let's check in with Rob Stone. Yeah, with Maurice Jones, Drew, the uh, UCLA career all-purpose yard leader. What made your UCLA experience so special? Uh, just the players I came in with. Uh, just the people around us. You know, seeing some people now that I, I kind of grew up with and taught me the way of being an adult and being a professional. Uh, those people, they did a great job of just taking us on a path that we, that, uh, we would never be without them. You came up from Jacksonville yesterday. Didn't you know it was going to be this cold, man? Why, why, why come up here? Uh, I haven't seen you play live in about five years, so it was my chance to come back up. And I, one of my good buddies, I came with Chris Horton, plays with the Redskins, so I've been hanging out with him, and a lot of guys on our team are here, so it's fun. I got a, a player personnel question for you. A lot of talk in Jacksonville about Jacksonville native Tim Tebow coming to the Jaguars. <laughs> what do you think about that as a player and, and, and almost as a marketing stance as well for the Jags? Uh, Tim Tebow is a great player. Um, I don't know if that's what we need right now. We have a lot of other needs we need to uh, correct, but he's definitely a great player and would help a team out. So, you know, it's kind of hard for me to say something because I'm not the GM. And, uh, you know, if whatever team they get, they're going to get a great player. All right, last NFL question. You saw the Olds, the Colts in the opening of the season. You saw them two weeks ago. What has changed with the Colts? Um, they're just winning. They know how to win, and uh, that, that's what a championship team does, and that's why they're in the playoffs every year. So they have a recipe for winning, and Peyton Manning's a big part of it. All right, Maurice, good luck versus Cleveland in your last game this year. Thank, Thank you, you very man. much. I appreciate it. All right, Rob, thanks a lot. Well, you've got the two Florida guys down there. You've got Maurice Jones, Drew, and Rob Stone. Rob Stone, of course, calls Florida home as well. Maurice Jones, Drew, figured out what to wear. See the big heavy overcoat, the hat. <laughs> I mean, he looks. Look, he looks like he was ready for the temperatures. And then you look at Rob. <laughs> Rob looks like he put on a golf jacket to go out. It was going to be 58 and breezy in Tampa. <laughs> he, thought, he thought this game was at Raymond James Stadium. Temple holds defensively, and Jeff Locke punts it away. Delano Green calls for a fair catch. Rob, it's great. They've invented these things called overcoats. <laughs> We're wearing them up here. Yes. You might want to think about one next year. It's so hard to choose one. You know, during the sign then drive event, you can get a CC, Tiguan, or fuel efficient Jetta for practically just your signature. You can get scheduled maintenance at no cost. Well, there's got to be more to it than that. I'll never doubt you again. Sign then drive is back. Hurry in and get legendary Volkswagen value for practically just your signature. There are over 4,000 specially trained bomb disposal personnel in our armed forces tasked with disarming terrorist bombs. These brave men and women put their lives on the line every day to save others. The Wounded EOD Warrior Foundation offers compassionate solutions for wounded personnel and their families. Please support us at WoundedEODWarrior.org. We started with over one billion colors, generously added more than two million liquid crystal pixels, combined 960 backlighting LEDs with 240 flawless scenes per second, made it 50% more energy efficient, and it all came down to one thing. 
The new 55-inch True LED from Vizio. Superior picture performance. Superior price from America's number one LCD HDTV company. This could be the year you meet that perfect someone. The year you talk about for the rest of your life. Announcing the New Year's free communication event from eHarmony. eHarmony matched, hiding myself up. My first thought was, wow. I wanted to get that next email. I wanted to get that next communication. It was so exciting. Just fill out the eHarmony questionnaire. Find out who we match you up with, and you can communicate with them for free. The New Year's free communication event this Wednesday through Sunday. Start your year off right. Visit eHarmony today and communicate with your matches absolutely free. ESPN College Football, the Eagle Bank Bowl, is brought to you by Eagle Bank, we're listening, and Volkswagen Signed and Drive Event, German engineering for practically just a signature. Perfect weather to skate, you can do that outside here in our nation's capital, the Sculpture Garden Ice Rink right on the National Mall in Washington, D.C., where we have just about single-digit wind chill temperatures here as the sun has gone down at RFK a few folks prepared for it and Temple back to the offense tied at seven in the opening half of the Eagle Bank Bowl now flat penalty flags fly everywhere a false start first penalty of the game false start number 70 offense five yard penalty remains first down Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN Thursday with three games. First at noon Eastern, the Houston Cougars and Air Force and the Bell Helicopter Armed Forces Bowl. Then at 3.30 Eastern, it's Navy and Missouri in the Texas Bowl. And at 7.30 Eastern, 11th-ranked Virginia will take on Lane Kiffin's volunteers in the Chick-fil-A Bowl. So even more great football action comes your way later on this week. At Virginia Tech against Tennessee, Brian, that should be a very interesting game. The Chick-fil-A Bowl on Thursday night at 7:30 Eastern. It should be really interesting as the SEC now is is have been very successful. Georgia last night with a big uh, big win, uh, but Tennessee is rebuilding their program under Lane Kiffin, and they've got a superstar in the secondary, and Eric Berry, who's the all everything for them and for Monty Kiffin, the defensive coordinator. But West Virginia will give them all they can handle, I believe. Charlton checking off at the line, play clock at five. End around. James Nixon. And Akeem Ayers is there again. He stays home and makes the open field tackle for a loss of three. This isn't the temple that we've seen throughout the, the season. A lot of re reverses, uh, these tight end sets. Maneri trying to get a, a, a block on the second level, but the ball never got out there. Uh, the reverse was was stopped uh, at the line of scrimmage, but Matt Rule had mentioned to us that uh, they're going to do a lot in the play action game and then try to get some uh, yardage on the perimeter through their reverse game. Third and 12. Charlton trying to buy himself some time and throws it up the sideline and just about throws an interception. I think he was trying to throw that one away. And Kyle Bosworth was only about two yards away from having a chance to pick that one off. Yeah, all three of his receivers had run down the field on on vertical go routes, and he had nowhere to throw the football. And I know in his head, it kind of it goes off that I got to get rid of this football. Watch, all three guys go down the field, and as he rolls out, there's really nowhere to go with this football. Now, when you <laughs> when you go to throw the ball away, you got to throw it away. You don't want to leave it in the field of play where anybody has a chance to pick it off. And right there, it was almost a. An interception. Another false start called against Temple. This will march them five yards further false back. Start. Six. Offense. Five yard penalty. Remains fourth down. Now Al Golden, the head coach at Temple, also coaches the special teams. And he sent home his punter, Jeff Wapney, yesterday. So this is again the backup place kicker, a former walk-on, Jake Brownell, being called upon to punt for the first time ever. And this is not the real estate he'd like to be punting from inside his own 10 yard line. To make matters worse, it's 11 degrees and windy out, so he's happy just to catch the ball. That's a pretty good kick. Doesn't look very pretty in the air, but Austin calls for a fair catch at the 41 yard line. Now, he might be disputing whether or not he made the signal. 39 yard punt, no return. 
take another look and see if he motioned in some way. If you make any motion in college football, even a little wave in front of the face, apparently that's good enough yeah, that to qualify was, as a fair catch signal. That wasn't much of a signal, and uh, he looked like he was kind of in between making a signal and, and catching that ball. He had room to run, but if he makes any kind of a signal, it's a, it's a fair catch. Right. In the NFL, you have to take your hand and wave it over your head and make a pretty clear fair catch signal for it to be a fair catch in college. If you make any type of motion, that basically qualifies. Up the middle goes Derek Coleman for about two yards. Let's go down to Rob. Well, Bob, Coach Newhouse is very active when the offense is off the field and on the bench, coming by, talking to his receivers, asking him what he's seeing out there, and talking to his, his young QB, Kevin Prince, saying, hey, guys, on second down, Kevin, a lot of times they're going cover two, not the Tampa two, but just the regular cover two. And then also you guys were talking yesterday. You know, I'm curious how Kevin Prince, how that shoulder will hold up, particularly in the cold weather. Well, he's done most of the time just sitting on that heated bench, but for the first time during their last break last series, he actually stepped away from it and did some throws to try and keep that right shoulder. Nice and loose. Screen set up. Dropped by Jonathan Franklin. Well, to Brian ask you about Rob Stone's report. Now, when Rick Neuheisel comes over and says it's not Tampa 2, it's cover 2. I mean, for the, the guy at home that's wondering what that means, what's the difference? Well, you know, cover 2 has been around the NFL and, and in college for 35 years. Tampa 2 was really invented by Monty Kiffin down in Tampa. And what it is is the Mike linebacker will run deep down the middle of the field and take, allow the two free safeties to take the sides of the field to outside areas of the of the field, which then allows the corners to play more aggressive up, up front. So it's just a completely different coverage in the secondary from the defense. Third down and seven. Prince rolls under pressure, hit as he throws, and it falls incomplete. Could have very easily been intercepted, and it looks like Prince may have been shaken up. So here Whitehead was there to bring him down. Yeah, and it's, it's been. Uh, I think he may have hurt his his arm earlier in this game, but right there, this is that is a, a tough hit, a way to go down on the ground, and for the defensive lineman to fall on top of you. Uh, I take the wind right out of you and blood of your lip as you see right there. He has taken a beating this year whether it's been his jaw his shoulder his hand his ribs. He's had a lot of things going on this year. Not gets the punt away Delano Green brought down immediately at the 15 yard line. Well Kevin Prince has been shaken up multiple times this season back against Tennessee on September 12th in a 1915 win. He was hit for a safety in the end zone in that game and fractured his jaw. He spent the next three weeks with his mouth wired shut, eventually came back to start the rest of the season. Then against USC on Thanksgiving weekend, suffered an AC sprain and mild separation in his right shoulder after being brought down by Everson Griffin. That time blitzed and comes away bloodied and maybe favoring the same shoulder. Who knows? Well you play quarterback long enough in, in college or the NFL and you're going to have some bloody noses some bloody lips that's just part of it uh, but he's had his fair share of this season of injuries and tough guy over the middle Evan Rodriguez makes the catch breaks a tackle comes close to a first down and let's check in with Rob Stone again. Yeah, Bob appears to be merely a flesh wound just a bloody lower lip so nothing with the jaw or the shoulder this time good news. Good news for him as you guys mentioned all the litany of injuries this young man has been through this season but just in case the backups are getting loose. Well Rob he suffered that fractured jaw against Tennessee back in the second week of the season and would end up missing a couple of starts as a result as well it's second down and one for Temple. And off to Pierce and it looks like he's got a first down might be just a hair shy so it might be third down in inches but. After spending three weeks with his jaw wired shut, he said they took Brian the wiring out, and the first thing he did, prime rib dinner. <laughs> Went straight to the restaurant, sat down, and said, I need a big piece of meat immediately. <laughs> well, it must have been a good piece of prime rib that just melts in your mouth, you know? He <laughs> didn't have to chew very much. Third down and a foot. Quarterback sneak for Charlton. Very close. Initially, it looked like he got there. Let's see where they spot the football. Oh, 
first down. So Temple keeps the drive moving as they have a fresh set of downs. Temple got off to a fast start in this game, but since then, UCLA defensively has really uh, come up big as four punts in a row. Uh, the last two series, three and outs. Temple needs to get something going here before halftime. Play action. Charlton swings one to a wide open Pierce. He's close to another first down. And it looks like he has it across the 35 yard line. Glenn Love was able to force him out of bounds. Again, you see first down play action from Temple being effective. And this is going to be their strategy today is, is run the ball on second and third and short, throw the ball on first down off a of play action. And anytime they can get the ball in number 30's hands, they're happy whether they hand it to him or whether they throw a swing pass or throw downfield. They just want to get him the football. the strength of Bernard Pierce running the football pounds his way out to midfield and a gain of 13 more yards Raheem Moore made the stop well, big hole right in the middle of your screen as Brian Price gets blocked again opening up the hole for Pierce and arm tackles are not going to bring him down he is a big kid 210 pounds he'll run through any arm tackle you, you attempt but Came into today averaging 119 yards per game rushing, 11th best in the country, and he's only a true freshman. What a future Temple has with that young man at running back. And now they go to the diminutive Matt Brown, and Brown uses speed to get to the outside. Another first down for the Owls. Boy, Matt Brown could just get lost in there. They call him the bug. You know, he's only 5'5", 167 pounds. He gets lost behind this big offensive line, all over 300 pounds, and he's got great vision and then the speed to get to the perimeter. A great changeup to Bernard Pierce. Pierce more the power back. Matt Brown more of the, the scat back. Pierce had the two shoulder injuries during the year. We don't want to overload him too much, and Mike Brown is an important cop. A little toss counter to Brown. Looked like the pitch was going to go to the strong side. He delayed for a moment, went back to the weak side, and picked up five yards. Is this by design? It's an interesting play. It tried to get the linebackers to flow with the pitch. As you see here, Pierce and Brown, both of them being effective with over 30 yards early in this football game. But that's a wrinkle that the, the East Coast offense has employed in that you pitch the ball, especially when you're having success running the ball in the perimeter, try to get those linebackers to flow over the top and then cut back with, with the uh, halfback. Successful right there for five yards. Charlton pumps one way, comes back the other way, tipped ball incomplete. Trying to find Maneri. But Alteron Werner was all over him. It'll be third down and five. Interesting call there. I think it's the only the second time in this game where we have seen Charlton just drop back and throw the ball without using play action. Not as successful for this Temple offense when they're not using play action. And on second and five, it's interesting that they would choose to throw the ball that way rather than play action. For UCLA on third down over the middle wide open Delano Green he's got a first down to the 11 yard line only his eighth catch of the season here's Green right here he's going to run up the field good protection in the pocket for Charlton has an opportunity to survey the field and Green just finds a wide open hole behind the defense a breakdown in the secondary for UCLA and a big conversion on third down. First and 10 at the 11, 10th play of the drive for Temple that has eaten up a big chunk of the remaining first half time under four minutes to go. Toss sweep to Pierce, blockers out in front, cuts it back at the five, touchdown!
impressive drive by the Temple Owls, throwing the football, running the football. Watch the center, Palumbo, pull out and lead on the edge for Pierce. Takes tremendous athletic ability to snap the ball and then get out there, and then you see another block by 73, and then the rest is Bernard Pierce. But impressive drive, throwing the football, converting third downs, converting a third and short early in the drive, and then finishing it off with Pierce and Matt Brown contributing a lot on that drive as well. The 16th rushing touchdown of the season for the true freshman Bernard Pierce. First team all Mac, also the freshman of the year in the conference, and it caps a 10-play, 85-yard touchdown drive for Temple. The Temple is asserting their dominance up front against UCLA and take the lead in this football game. Red Bull, New Year, no limits. New Year's Eve on ESPN. Tough call. Well, during the Volkswagen Sign Then Drive event, you can get a Jetta, Tiguan, or award-winning CC for practically just your signature. And Volkswagen even covers scheduled maintenance at no cost. It can't be that easy. That was pretty easy. Sign Then Drive is back. Hurry in and get legendary Volkswagen value for practically just your signature. SEC and Big Ten powers collide when Joe Paterno leads the Nittany Lions against LSU. Bowl week continues with the Capital One Bowl. Penn State LSU, New Year's Day at 1 Eastern on ABC. College football lives here. I've seen the joy. I've seen the anguish. Now Africa hosts its first World Cup. Italy will defend while 31 nations attack. Martin Tyler joins ESPN for the 2010 FIFA World Cup. If your credit card debt is out of control, if you're in over your head dealing with monthly payments, there's powerful information you need to know about the government's bailout of credit card companies. If you have more than $10,000 in credit card debt, you have the right to settle that debt for a fraction of what you owe with monthly payments you can afford. Credit card companies have been given billions and need to clean their books once and for all. And that's great news for you. We're Credit Answers. And we'd like to offer you free information that will show you how to settle your credit card debt with payment plans customized for you. It's yours free by calling now. Don't declare bankruptcy. Give us 10 minutes and learn how we have saved our clients millions. For free information on how to settle your credit card debt in the government bailout era, call now. Credit Answers, the answer to your credit card debt. Call 1-800-500-7016. That's 1-800-500-7016. A very chilly night in our nation's capital. Happy holidays from all of us at ESPN. The Eagle Bank Bowl. And Temple has the lead back by seven here at RFK. The Owls in their first bowl game since 1979. Their first winning season since 1990. And they are soaking up this experience. To say the least, Papa Shoes and Brian Greasy, Rob Stone, here in Washington, D.C., from about the eight yard line, Terrence Austin. Barely reaches the 20 as we check in with Reese. Guys, coming up on the HR Block halftime report, we'll have new developments on the Mike Leach situation in Lubbock. We'll look ahead to the matchup in the Champ Sports Bowl between the Badgers and the Canes. And I know a guy that back in the day, way back in the day, way, way back in the day, who could have blocked in Dominican Sioux. We'll see what Mayday would have done with a big fella from Nebraska when you come back at halftime. Well, Reese, we welcome you back to Mark May's old stomping grounds here at RFK. He's got fond memories of this place. Kevin Prince over the middle, incomplete. First Mark May, one of the hogs. There's the fun bunch, the hogs, Joe Theismann. The Diesel, John Riggins yeah. used to call this place home. I was kind of hoping that we'd see those, you know, hogettes in the stadium today. You know, just come back for old times' sake. <laughs> <laughs> not, not so, not so lucky. Well, there's been some great football games and some great teams that played for the Redskins here in Washington. Second down and ten for UCLA. Dominant first half, especially in terms of time of possession so far for Temple. Only a touchdown lead. Up the seam, high throw, and 
intercepted. Picked off at the 45-yard line by Liverpool. You'll toss on a face mask as well. Flags everywhere. Shane Moline grabbed the face mask of Marquise Liverpool. So his third interception gets it to the 30. And Temple will have it all the way down at about the 15-yard line. Personal foul, face mask, number 42. On the return of the interception, 15 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Interesting decision. You're going to see here Liverpool will be back on the outside. We're going to try to get the football to him. Prince just overthrows the receiver. Overthrows Paulson and Liverpool is just playing fair catch back there. And interesting decision by Rick Neuheisel and Norm Chow to come out in this drive in an empty set and throw the football like they're in a two minute drill. There's three and a half minutes left on the clock in the first half and three timeouts. I don't necessarily agree with opening it up and allowing Prince just to throw it all over the field there. Now it's going to come back to bite him. Turnover, ball in the 15 yard line. Of a 10 yard line goes Bernard Pierce. Friday, New Year's Day at 4 30 Eastern. ABC brings you the Rose Bowl game presented by City. It's Ohio State taking on number seven, Oregon. And then Thursday, January 7th at 8, Colt McCoy and number two, Texas taking on the Heisman winner, Mark Ingram, and number one, Alabama in the City BCS na National Championship that, right? game. We'll have those for you on ABC as the Mac freshman of the year Bernard Pierce heads off to the sideline and the tailback again is Matt Brown second and five from the 10 for Temple Brown stop start all the way down to the three yard line Walter Ron Werner saved the touchdown but a great cutback by Matt Brown great cutback and again he got lost behind this offensive line you can't see him back there look how short he is and he just squats down and it's hard when you're in the secondary a safety or corner to see or a linebacker to see where he cuts but you know if Temple can punch this football in before the half and go up by two touchdowns on UCLA think of the momentum that they will have and the excitement as their sideline is already jumping up and down it's only the second quarter clock at four Brown goes wide cuts it back and he's brought down at about the two yard line after a gain of a yard Ayers and Reggie Carter combine on the tackle and again I have to go back to you know the decision to allow Prince to throw the ball uh, in a wide open sets uh, with three and a half minutes left and, uh, and Rick Neuheisel I wonder if they start to feel the momentum switching towards Temple and getting behind in this game and feeling the need to get some points on the board before half but uh, that's not the strength of UCLA's offense. Al Golden running out of the on the field wanted to call timeout instead the handoff to Brown and he's in for a touchdown. A play that Al Golden was trying to stop from happening before it started results in another score for the Owls. Well, when things are going your way, it's hard to stop that too. <laughs> Al Golden will certainly take it, and uh, he saw something he didn't like, but his players overcame it. Well, Matt Brown for once happy that Al Golden didn't get the timeout as he scores his fifth touchdown of the season. After some machinations, Brandon McManus, also a freshman, to attempt the extra point. And he's three for three. And the Temple Owls, in their first bowl game in 30 years, up by two touchdowns. The little man gets, gets fed. Working kidneys at kidney.org. A message from the National Kidney Foundation. Hey, Tech! The only bull in your future is the one holding your chips! 
Good one, little B. Ah, I thought of that in the shower. You actually paid money for this thing, Bergwood? You're talking to me, dummy. Burn. The more you save on insurance, the more you'll have for football. Drivers who switch from Geico to Allstate saved an average of $473 a year. Are you in good hands? <laughs> Nobody really likes to travel that much for work. Five-hour plane travel followed by uh, maybe a hotel room. What things were you going to have to get done at home, you know, with your family? Followed by getting to the actual meeting. And there's, of course, you know, the, the time lost while you're gone. Put meetings in their place with GoToMeeting. With one click, GoToMeeting lets you hold online meetings from anywhere. Everyone in your meeting can give presentations and sales demos, edit documents, and collaborate in real time, whether on a PC or a Mac. Hold unlimited online meetings with integrated phone and VoIP conferencing for just $49 a month. You can see somebody's idea of moving something on the screen somewhere else, and yeah, that looks way better. It's less complicated than probably most of the activities you already do on your computer. I saved a day's worth of travel, probably $1,000 worth of expenses. With GoToMeeting, I actually made money. It's not only the time savings, it's what's possible now. It's one of those tools we can't live without. Try GoToMeeting free today. Visit GoToMeeting.com and use the promo code SPORTS. Wind chills expected to be below 20 degrees here in Washington at the Eagle Bank Bowl. Bob Schusen and Brian Greasy upstairs. Rob Stone doing his best to hang in downstairs. And Temple fans have never felt warmer. And the team has never felt warmer. 21-7. The Owls have the lead. Al Golden, no need for a jacket. Austin from the eighth. Looking for some daylight. And steps out of bounds at about the 28-yard line. Well, Temple in the first half, a two-headed monster at running back, and they've both been effective. Well, they really have, averaging over four yards a carry for Pierce and five, uh, almost five and a half for, for Matt Brown. They do it in different ways. Pierce is more of the meat and potatoes, and, and Matt Brown is the flash. And uh, they have a great complement to each other. And uh, this... Uh, Give credit to the Temple offensive line, who all year has been dominating up front. Uh, and tonight has been no different. UCLA still has all three of their timeouts. Underneath pass to Taylor Embry. And he's close to a first down, a gain of nine. Gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 109 remaining. Kevin Prince, only a redshirt freshman at quarterback, trying to get some momentum back and some points on the board before halftime. Well, they scored, Temple scored 14 unanswered points, and, and you know, we talked about the decision last drive to open it up. Now it's important that UCLA gets something out of this drive, a minute and a half in, in the half. Uh, even the field goal uh, would stop the bleeding for UCLA, would be critical. Low snap, Prince scoops it up. Looks for the deep ball to Austin up the sideline. Does he get a foot down? The officials say no. He made the catch but couldn't drag the foot in bounds. And Austin was open. It was a little bit late on the delivery from Prince. I think he, had he been on time, that would have been a completion. And a lot of people say, is that the route? That's the throw being late right there. If it's on time, he's got plenty of room to get his feet down. Well, that was very close. As the ball just barely pulled him out of bounds, but of course one foot down all you need in college, and he just about dragged the back toe. Play clock at five. On third down. Slant, caught, and then dropped. Rosario had it in his hands and couldn't maintain control. 58 seconds to go on the opening half, and Temple will get one more crack at him. And again, the throw is a little bit behind Rosario, definitely catchable, and uh, right now UCLA needs somebody to make a play uh, on offense or defense to get back in this game, and things start going downhill, momentum, you lose momentum, it's hard to get it back, and it's all on Temple side right now. Delano Green will let it bounce. 
lost his team about eight, maybe ten yards worth of field position by letting that one roll to the 20-yard line. The Sports Center segment just for you, the Boston, Dallas, Chicago, and Los Angeles sports fan. From coast to coast, you can now get the latest news on the teams you care about the most. The power of ESPN covering Boston, Chicago, Dallas, and now the Los Angeles sports scene as well. The inside info you're accustomed to now with local flavor. It's ESPN Los Angeles, Chicago, Boston, and Dallas.com. We look at how Al Golden has, has turned this program around, and a lot of it has to do with the offensive line up front, but he has brought uh, an attitude to this team, and you see it. Their energy level on the sideline is through the roof, and they can't wait to get out and play football. Little comeback throw to Michael Campbell. He's out of bounds. Stops the clock. About an eight-yard game. If you're Al Golden and Matt Rule, the offensive coordinator, how frisky do you get with your play calling inside your own 30-yard line with a two-touchdown lead late? I think they're very happy right now to go into the locker room with two-touchdown lead and, and continue to build on the momentum and the positive things they've done early in this game and avoid any negative play that could happen that could take the momentum away from them. Draw play to Brown. He bounces it outside. Brought down shy of the first down. Alteron Werner came up to make the tackle. And now UCLA, I think, is spending a timeout. A loss of a couple. It'll be third down. 32 seconds to go in the opening half. And of course, when you're in Washington, D.C., there's always a big military presence and obviously reminders of everything that our military has done for us. And the Wounded Warrior Project was founded in 2003. The project's vision is to foster the most successful and well-adjusted generation of wounded veterans in our nation's history. The center's design proudly incorporates seven warrior character traits, duty, honor, courage, commitment, integrity, country, and service. Hard to imagine a more worthwhile cause. What an incredibly important program. And, you know, you think about wounded veterans coming back. I can't think of any more important population of people uh, that all of us need to, to support those that put their lives on the line each and every day. And uh, it's important that we take care of them when they come back. And especially seem mindful of their sacrifice, the holidays as well, scattered around the globe, protecting our nation. 32 seconds to go in the opening half. 21-7, Temple has the lead. Third down and three. Still two timeouts for UCLA if they get a stop. Charlton lobs one up the sideline, and it floats incomplete. Michael Campbell, the intended receiver. Well, that didn't waste too much time, and it also saved UCLA having to call one of their timeouts with 26 seconds to go. And now, again, the special teams challenge for Al Golden is the fact that, as we've been reminding you, he sent his punter home this week because of a violation of team rules. So Jay Brownell, who's the backup place kicker, called upon to punt for the first time ever. And again, he'll be letting this one go from inside his own 15-yard line. Slipped and fell and got away a wobbly kick. Austin from the 45-yard line. Brought down immediately, but still pretty good field position after only a 28-yard punt. And if Brownell is shaken up, what's option number three? <laughs> well, he just slips. The, the field is obviously very cold, and when it gets cold, it gets hard. Uh, and he just slipped right there. But an interesting, it, it, to go back to that third and five, I wonder if that was the, the, the play that was called from the sideline to throw the ball down the field or whether that was an audible on the part of Charlton. Uh, the coaching staff didn't look very happy with him when he came off the field. It didn't take much time off the clock. Prince. Underneath to Logan Paulson as a first down. That'll stop the clock at the 41-yard line with nine seconds to go. And if you're Rick Newhouse, you might as well call one of your timeouts here. In spite of the fact that the first down stops the clock until they've got the chain set, you still have two timeouts left. So you also have the Lou Groza Award winner as the best place kicker in America in Kai Forbath. And let's go down to Rob. Ivan. 
hanging out with Forbath for much of this game because he wisely has placed himself by a heater and somehow I found my way migrating <laughs> there. But I found it interesting the fact that, hey, he really hasn't taken a whole lot of kicks since warm-up. So you haven't seen his leg being swung at all. He hasn't been sitting on those team heated benches because he says, you know, the, that thing just kind of keeps your skin warm, not your muscles loose. So he's had a thick pair of sweatpants on. He's been staying by the heater. And he said the one thing that really is tough with the conditions here are not so much the wind. Yeah, you're going to lose a couple yards in his mind. Maybe five going the direction they are right now. But the placement, the footing, he said, has been very slick. I have to kind of do my placement foot a little tenderer than I would like to. Otherwise, I'm going to lose it. We saw what that uh, what that happened to the Temple corner on their last part. Some footing issues. Let's see if they can get him a bit closer, Rob, as Prince drops the throw, flips it to Moline. The clock winding down. Moline stays on his feet, steps out of bounds, and the clock stops with one <laughs> second to go in the Temple sideline. And I think all their fans thought that it should have gone to all zeros. <laughs> Just like you drew it up right here, you want to get the ball to your receiver and then have him get down and then call a timeout. But Moline wants to get an extra yardage. You would have liked to have seen him hit the ground so you can then call your timeout, but uh, it worked out in their favor. Get a few more extra yards. And a good call. As his left foot certainly seemed to land out of bounds clearly with one second on the clock. So here's Kai Forbath, who's made his last 35 straight from inside of 50 yards. He also has nine career field goals of 50 or more. So this one might come from about 40 yards out, but I bet in these conditions it's going to feel like a 53-yarder. Yeah, I mean, he's made 35 in a row, but uh, he hasn't kicked from a frozen field. I know that. 40-yard field goal to try and get three more points for UCLA. Forbath is 26 of 29 on the season, 90%, won the Lou Groza Award as the nation's top place kicker. And now Golden's going to call timeout. And I think, I, I don't know about that, that timeout right there. That just allowed Forbath to go through his whole procedure, check the footing, kick the ball. He made the kick, even though it's not going to count. But that's going to give him some uh, some solace in his mind that, you know what, I can do this. I remember asking Jay Feely, who's the kicker for the Jets, um, when this whole thing started in the NFL with coaches calling timeouts. And he said, actually, exactly that. It's almost nice to have a warm-up try. You know, if you miss it, you know you get another try. If you make it on the warm-up try, you've got positive vibes going towards the kick that will count. Right. He said the best time to call a timeout, if you're going to ice the kicker, is to call it before, before the, the snap. ball is snapped. Yeah. And so Al Golden may have waited just a hair too long as Forbath got a warm-up attempt. For real now from 40 yards out. And he sneaks it inside the left upright and good. So UCLA ends the first half with points, but Temple ends the first half with a two-score lead. Well, if you're the Lou Groza award winner, it doesn't really matter if you call a timeout or not. You're just delaying the inevitable, but nonetheless, a, a tremendous first half for Temple, and they've got a lot of momentum going into the halftime. So four bath good. Rick Neuheisel likes it. Let's head down to Rod, Rob Stone. Well, Coach, you told us this week your team has had problems against the prime cut teams. Why are you guys having so much success so far today? Well, we're running the ball effectively. Uh, we got 31 runs plus completions, which means we're running the ball and catching the ball, you know, underneath, and we're making some people miss. We're very physical right now in defense. We're running the ball well. Huge energy on your sideline for your fans behind you. How do you maintain that through halftime into the second half? How to maintain it. You know, I mean, you don't win the game in the first half. You win the game in the fourth quarter. Our kids know that. Now we got to go finish. I sound like a used car salesman, but what do I got to do to get you in a coat? <laughs> hey, that's Temple Tough. <laughs> I right? love it. To UFL. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. <laughs> <laughs> That's great stuff. All right, Rob, thanks very much. 21-10, Temple with the lead at halftime. Now let's go back to Reese Davis, Lou Holtz, and one of the hogs, Mark May. We'd love to welcome Mark back to RFK. They're in the studio, He's the H&R Block Halftime Report. 
Temple tough, but let me tell you something. A hog to my far left was tough, but he was hunting for the parka on a day like that in RFK, weren't you? I was first in line. First in line. <laughs> hey, UCLA showed some toughness at the end of the half. Certainly, they're not used to this environment in terms of the weather. But Temple getting to play in a bowl game for the first time since 79, they're quitting themselves well. And El Golden definitely has them prepared for this game. And this team wants to play in this bowl game. It's evident by the way they're playing in this game. They have twice as many yards offensively. And if you look at the way that they're playing offensively, scoring 21 points in the first half over 240 yards, I think that's key for Temple to run the football, physical, dominate the line of scrimmage on both sides. What really impressed me about Temple, you know, they're playing UCLA, they aren't intimidated at all. They're running their same basic game plan they ran all year. It's like saying, hey, we're as good as you are and we aren't, don't have to trick you or do anything else. They're they're playing physical, and it's like playing an all-star or all-mid-American conference football team when you see how many of those offensive linemen were all-conference. But they're very, very impressive. They're very well coached. Coach Golden can be proud of this team. They're temple tough, Reese. Don't forget it. We've that. got a new <laughs> phrase now that we'll certainly uh, continue to incorporate as Temple continues to play well, a 21-10 lead at the half. And we continue here on the H&R Block Halftime Report. We'll have the latest on the Mike Leach situation, a new development just moments ago as Leach tries to get back in the saddle and coaches team in the Valero Alamo Bowl and we'll look ahead to the matchup tonight between Wisconsin and Miami in the Champ Sports Bowl who has the edge there. It's so hard to choose one. You know during the sign then drive event you can get a CC Tiguan or fuel efficient Jetta for practically just your signature. You can get scheduled maintenance at no cost. Well, there's got to be more to it than that. I'll never doubt you again. Sign then drive is back. Hurry in and get legendary Volkswagen value for practically just your signature. Well, hey, glad I caught you. I was on my way to present ideas about all the discounts we're offering. I've got some catchphrases that'll make these savings even more memorable. All right. Good driver discounts. Now that's the stuff. How about this? They're the bee's knees. Why this? Sir, how about just 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance? Huh, yeah. Good luck with that catching on. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Most people make resolutions based on what they see on the outside. This year, focus on what's inside and let Cheerios help tackle your cholesterol. Now you could win a free box to get started. Treat yourself to something special for lunch. How about a coastal soup and grilled shrimp salad combination at Red Lobster? Or maybe our new shrimp jambalaya simmered with Creole spices. Skewers of wood grilled shrimp. Or your choice of shrimp paired with wood grilled chicken. Seafood lunches starting at just $6.99 that fit into your budget and your lunch hour. Only at Red Lobster. Tailgating isn't an event. It's an art. You got to get here early if you want to get a good spot. You got to think about things like the sun, the wind direction. Things the rookies never think of, but we veterans know. You need at least two or three meat varieties, a couple different drinks, no vegetables. You know, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it right. Same with taking care of the truck that gets me here. That's why I use Napa parts. <clears throat> Is it too early for a brat? Yeah. Want a four-star hotel at a two-star price? Go to hotwire.com. When four-star hotels have unsold rooms, they use Hotwire to fill them. So you get them at ridiculously low prices. H-O-T-W-I-R-E, hotwire.com. This halftime report is presented by H&R Block. For all of your tax questions, click call or come over. H&R Block, get it right. A rough start for the Pac-10 in the bowl season with the exception of USC and a rough first half for the Bruins, down 21-10 to Temple. We'll hear from Mark and Lou coming up in a matter of moments. Texas Tech head coach Mike Leach is seeking a temporary restraining order which would allow him to coach the Red Raiders in the Valero Alamo Bowl against Michigan State on January 2nd. A hearing has been set to settle that dispute at 8.30 Central Time tomorrow morning in the 99th District Court in Lubbock. Leach, as you probably know, was suspended as head coach of the Red 
Raiders yesterday amid allegations that he mistreated wide receiver Adam James following James' diagnosis of having a concussion. James is the son of ESPN analyst Craig James. Leach is alleged to have twice secluded James in a small dark room close to the practice field but away from the team. Now what exactly constitutes and how that small dark room is characterized is in dispute a little bit. And a physician who has examined Adam James had this to say in a memo according to details uncovered by Joe Shad. On December 21st, Dr. Michael Fye, who is a Texas Tech physician, wrote that James suffered no additional risk or harms that were imposed on him by what he was asked to do by Leach. That's the end of the quote. Leach's attorney, Ted Liggett, maintains that the head coach did nothing wrong. He wasn't isolated. He had a certified licensed trainer supervising a graduate student who was supervising an undergraduate student, three folks watching him. And Mike, sure, Mike, asked was he able to stand and he was the university questioned the doctor the doctor put out a statement the statement said that um as far as he was concerned the doctor thought mike's actions helped him all right, here are some details on Mike Leach's contract, which was just signed in February. It's a five-year, $12.7 million deal. If he is the head coach December 31st, that's Thursday, Leach, under terms of his contract, is entitled to an $800,000 bonus. If he is terminated, he is set to receive $400,000 for each year remaining on the contract. And now this also from Joe Shad. Multiple sources are telling Shad that the coach and his attorneys anticipate the Texas Tech will try to fire Mike Leach in the very near future. All right, guys, you look at this, and this story continues to unfold on myriad layers, and, and obviously they dispute the characterization of the facts on the two sides between the James family and Mike Leach. Putting that aside for a moment, given the fact that Texas Tech chose to suspend him as opposed to a letter of reprimand, other type of disciplinary action that they might have chosen to take, does it appear to you, Mark, that Texas Tech has put itself in a position where they are trying to rid themselves, fire, buy out, whatever, of Mike Leach? Well, I believe it does, because absolutely, I think they've laid the groundwork now for that to happen. They easily could have said, hey, Mike, take a step back, think about what you're doing. Maybe you should pick up the phone and call the family and the player and bring them in and sit down and explain to them what happened and your reasons for that happening and probably apologize. This could have all probably gone away. But if you look at the situations now, by suspending Mike Leach, I think right now the groundwork's laid. They they are letting him know that that $800,000 due on Thursday, they probably will not be signing that check. <laughs> You're unbelievable. You always look at it from a player's point of view. How about looking at it from a coach's point of view? One time, I wish I'd have coached you. I, I, you talk about. You wouldn't have put me. You wouldn't have put me in a dark place and left me there just to stand up for a couple no, hours. No, but you, you, you would have been a clubhouse lawyer. I can just tell being around you. But let me say this: ten years on the job, Mark. Ten years on the job. Not one time has this ever come up. You don't just make up your mind all of a sudden that hey, I'm going to change. I'm going to do this or that. I don't know whether he did or whether he did not. But I think you have to give some justification to the fact he's been there ten years. I've never heard one allegation about him mishandling a player. But he doesn't dispute that right. he did it. He disputes whether it was wrong. What, what, what he says is what he did was he thought he was doing it in the boy's best interest. Now, you know, when you put your discipline, all your discipline, Oh, you got that look. I know. I wish I could. You, you, you take an individual, you put your discipline in academics because all the discipline is for him. You don't put your discipline on football and particularly to an injured player. Yeah, but as a player, looking through a player's eyes, I would be embarrassed because that's demeaning in front of my teammates, in front of my peers, the guys that I spend time with off the field and go to class, go to study hall with, have meals with. That is embarrassing and demeaning. And for me as a player, I wouldn't accept that. And as a recruit, I would say, hmm, would I really want to go there? Because maybe the next time that could be me. It wasn't in front of the players. He was in a room all by but himself. But all the players knew about no, I, When you I, go back in the locker room, hey, let, let me tell you, you earn your respect by what you do on the field, by your toughness, by your tempo. It doesn't have a thing to do with talent. It doesn't have a thing to do with whether you're third team or first team, by how hard you work, how dedicated you are to a team, and how physical you play the game of football. That's where you earn the respect.
We'll continue to watch <laughs> this story and see how it unfolds. Again, there is a hearing set in the 99th District Court on Mike Leach seeking a temporary restraining order that would allow him to coach against Michigan State on January 2nd in the Valero Alamo Bowl. Still to come on the H&R Block Halftime Report, we'll look ahead to the rest of the bowl season. There's a second half not far away. What a great job Al Golden's Temple Owls are doing. They are Temple tough through the first 30 minutes and up by 11 on the Bruins. What's coming up on Family of Networks on ABC, the Rose Bowl game presented by City, Oregon, and Ohio State on the first and on the seventh, Alabama and Texas for all the marbles. Is my cable TV tax deductible? Even the uh, weird stuff? Should I be getting receipts from the babysitter? Can I claim my 30-year-old as a dependent? Whatever your question, however you want to do your taxes. Kitchen remodeling. Is that a write-off? H&R Block gives you the flexibility to work online, on the phone, or in person. Click, call, or come over. H&R Block. Get it right. My new computer started out fast, really fast, but now it's only kind of fast. Hold on, let me check my email. It's not loading. Let me try this again. <sighs> if your computer doesn't run like it's supposed to, if your internet connection is unreliable, even on a so-called fast connection, even if your brand new computer isn't as fast as it ought to be, you might not have any real problem at all. Finallyfast.com free performance test will immediately diagnose any hidden problems and show you how to get more speed on any computer. Plus, finallyfast.com provides you the software you need to get your computer up to peak performance by getting rid of all the nasty junk files, spyware, adware, and registry errors that make even the best computers freeze and crash. Find out why Ascentive has been featured in Newsweek, Forbes, and the Wall Street Journal. You could save hundreds, even thousands of dollars by taking the Finally Fast performance test first. I'm booted up. What's that URL I should look at? Finallyfast.com. Hey, my computer's fast. Finally. Finallyfast.com. There are over 400,000 NCAA student athletes. And just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. UCLA ran into a buzzsaw in the first half, but the Bruins did get on the board. Got a touchdown, a field goal from Forbath just before the break. They're within striking distance down 21-10, halftime of the Eagle Bank Bowl. Got the Champ Sports Bowl coming up, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge. Pretty night in Orlando, Florida. Happy holidays. We get set for the Champ Sports Bowl here. And the number 15 Miami Hurricanes taking on the 25th ranked Badgers of Wisconsin. You take a look at these two teams, a star quarterback in the making, I think, Ledge, and definitely a star running back already on the other side. Yeah, two very talented sophomores. We saw Miami's Ja'Cory Harris in the opener throw for 386 against Florida State. He's got poise. He's a great leader. He's got tremendous arm talent. He can make every throw. The only problem, sometimes he trusts that arm too much yeah. and throws too many interceptions. That's what's gotten him into trouble this year. Now, John Clay for Wisconsin, a big physical downhill runner. The downhill part of the season, the last five games, averaged 136 yards a game and scored nine touchdowns so two outstanding players in the ball game and he was the offensive player of the year in the Big Ten normally you'd look at this game and you just say well Miami Wisconsin gonna be speed against smash mouth Randy Shannon says maybe not there might be more similarities than you think both head coaches are defensive guys uh, both teams were seven and six both teams this year five and three in the conference both teams are nine and three we like to run the football, they like to run the football. You know, we like to play great defense, they like to play great defense. I think it comes down when you get the bowl game, it's like the beginning of the season. Turnovers and who can tackle. Both teams looking for that all-elusive 10th win of the season. And they're ready for the Champ Sports Bowl coming up a little bit later. Right now, let's go back to the studio. All right, Brad, we'll look forward to it. Nature and our block halftime report rolls on with just how you block a superstar coming up. It's amazing how a simple switch can make life a whole lot better. Try this. Yeah. Like switching to eSurance. With our switch and save discount, just switch from your current car insurance carrier and you'll automatically get a discount. Thanks, lady. eSurance is the only insurance company that offers the switch and save discount. And that's on top of all the other great eSurance discounts. 
Once you shop at Eshern, we think you'll find that switching thank you. is a good thing. The Switch and Save discount only from Eshurance. Click or call today. I own the world's number one search engine. I own the leading alternative energy company. I own my wireless company, not the other way around. It's your future. Get your share at ShareBuilder, where people are building the future they want by buying stock in the companies they want to own. With no account minimum required, it's easy to get started at ShareBuilder.com. So get on the road to happiness with ShareBuilder. It's your future. Get your share. Temple is truly a college of the people. Students are amazing. Temple graduates are in demand. I'm an educated person, and Temple did that for me. This December, celebrate with our best offer of the year. Wow. Get over $10 cash back from DirecTV Cinema when you order any four movies between now and the end of the year. I love it. Movies like The Hangover. Through a night we'll never forget. Yeah. Oh, my God. Julie and Julia. I'm becoming a much better person because of her. Bonjour. Terminator Salvation. We are all dead. This month, order any four movies and get over $10 cash back. DirecTV Cinema, channels 125 through 199. In the NBA, you're always looking for an edge. You need to know your opponent better than they know themselves. Kobe, Carmelo, LeBron. I get my edge with NBA League Pass from DirecTV. I see every game, so I'm always ready. Are you? Watch any NBA game you want, no matter where you live. Call today. You're watching the H&R Block Halftime Report. Tomorrow night, Arizona and Nebraska in the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Mr. Hall of Fame offensive lineman, how would you block Ndamukong Kinsu? Ask for help. Either side, guard, tackle, somebody help you. But the main thing, you want to get his head on a swivel. You want to make sure that you trap block him, you kick block him. And you want to make sure you put the tight end in motion and wham block him so he's got his head on a swivel. He won't know which way to turn. And after the game, you can do what the Texas offensive line did. Pick up the phone and call Dr. Lou. <laughs> <laughs> well, you do. You sit and you chop them. Say, I hope I hope, don't hurt your pro career. Cut, cut. Nothing illegal. Cut them. It's illegal. Kind of, no, it's don't, illegal. It's don't illegal. suggest anything. Oh, just man up and Here's block. what he would do. <laughs> Holding. Number no, 73 no, on the no, offense. No, no. Leg whip. <laughs> this halftime report is presented by H&R Block. For all of your tax questions, click, call, or come over. H&R Block. Get it right. Is a haircut a job hunting expense? Last summer, my kid made four figures. Does he need to file a tax return? They're not just any questions. Did we just make a charitable donation? They're the trickiest, thorniest questions of all. Is this considered a home office? Bring your tax question to the company that helped clients get over $43 billion in refunds last year alone. How can I get more money? Click, call, or come over. H&R Block. Get it right. If you've had a heart attack caused by a completely blocked artery, another heart attack could be lurking, waiting to strike. A heart attack caused by a clot, one that could be fatal. But Plavix helps save lives. Plavix, taken with other heart medicines, goes beyond what other heart medicines do alone to provide greater protection against heart attack or stroke and even death by helping to keep blood platelets from sticking together and forming clots. Ask your doctor about Plavix, protection that helps save lives. People with stomach ulcers or other conditions that cause bleeding should not use Plavix. Taking Plavix alone or with some other medicines, including aspirin, may increase bleeding risk, so tell your doctor when planning surgery. Certain genetic factors in some medicines, such as Prilosec, may affect how Plavix works. Tell your doctor all the medicines you take, including aspirin, especially if you've had a stroke. If fever, unexplained weakness, or confusion develops, tell your doctor promptly. These may be signs of TTP, a rare but potentially life-threatening condition reported sometimes less than two weeks after starting Plavix. Other rare but serious side effects may occur. These days, getting a loan can take a credit score of 720 or more. I need my FICO score, not this. For a new job, I need my credit report. Get Equifax 3 Bureau Monitoring from the experts in credit reporting. Monitor all three of your nationwide credit files and get alerts of key changes within 24 hours. Order today and get your FICO score three times per year free. With Equifax, I know right where I stand.
Go to Equifax.com slash scores today. Offer in soon. When you hit the quarterback, that's a great feeling. But actually, solving a math problem gives me a bigger buzz. Even if the process is very strenuous, just the satisfaction at the end that you found the answer was just always something I liked. The hardest aspect is proofs, when you have to explain why something exists instead of just assuming it exists. UCLA's math program is no cakewalk, but at the end, there's a great reward. Welcome back to Washington and the 2009 Eagle Bank Bowl, UCLA and Temple, just about set for the start of the second half. And a somewhat surprising first half, an 11 point lead for the Owls in their first bowl game in 30 years. Bob Schusen back here with Brian Greasy, Rob Stone with us as well. What surprised you the most about the first half? Well, Temple's ability to run the football and, and possess the ball. They had 21 minutes of possession to eight minutes for UCLA, 241 yards of offense. This UCLA defense really got it handed to them in the first half. Now you would expect also that Temple would struggle throwing the football, but they actually got some big chunk plays through the air. This is their first drive. They really did off a of play action. Charlton to Nixon right here, and then the touchdown to Maneri really opened up the passing game for Temple and allowed them the opportunity to start running the football with Bernard Pierce, who started to wear down the UCLA defense in the first half. Touchdown run here and a good cutback. And then after they got done seeing him, they got the bug. Matt Brown right here with a great cutback. He ended up scoring a touchdown as well. So Temple really established both running the football and throwing the football and took control of the game early. For Temple, you would expect them to have some success on the ground. They are 23rd best in the nation running it at over 190 yards per game. But they were 112th out of 120 teams in FBS throwing the football. And yet look at the passing yards in the first half. Yeah, give credit to Vaughn Charlton, and all of that is set up with the play-action game, and then, you know, obviously the time of possession. Anytime you can run the ball and possess it, uh, you're going to have an advantage in, in the game. And Vaughn Charlton was 12 of 16 in the first half for 153 yards and, and a touchdown. Give him credit. Second half kickoff coming down to Terrence Austin. A short kick comes down to him at about the 19-yard line, and Austin out across the 40 to about the 46-yard line. So good field position for UCLA. And with more on the Bruins, here's Rob. Well, Coach Rick, Coach Rick Neuheisel, always an upbeat guy. We could really hear the disappointment in his voice as I talked to him coming back on the field. Here's his biggest issue, though, guys. This one kind of interesting. Footing. Yeah, he said the footing is the biggest problem we had. I'm not trying to make an excuse. We're just having a lot of problems with our footing out there. I said, Coach, any equipment changes you can make? He said, no, we got what we got. We're going to have to stay with it. But what we need to do is make the defensive backs have the footing issues for Temple. Toss sweep to Jonathan Franklin, trying to stretch wide, and he's brought down at the 45-yard line. Peanut Joseph in pursuit. He made the stop. And, you know, talking with Rick Neuheisel earlier this week, you always wonder how the big conference team is going to react when they're playing the smaller conference team. We asked him, you know, coming all the way across the country to play in the Eagle Bank Bowl, what does this mean to your school? We know what it means to Temple. And he said, we couldn't have been happier that they allowed us to be in the postseason and we got this bowl bid. When you're rebuilding a program, there's steps along the way as you go. And he feels just playing in a bowl game is a big move for UCLA in the right direction. Prince slants one underneath. Paulson makes the catch, carrying a tackler to about the 41-yard line. That time he had Peanut Joseph on his hip and dragged him for six or seven yards. A well, good job here. The tight end, you're going to see him, Paulson, come up and run a little stick route. And they've got to get some positive plays in the passing game early in the second half. And that's about as easy a throw as you're going to get. And uh, good location. And Paulson has made a lot of plays in his career at UCLA. They've got a good a group of tight ends with Paulson and Moya, the uh, backup number 15. Back to the air, Prince. Well protected, looking for a check down option. Now retreating and has to throw it away. Good coverage downfield by Temple. A great coverage downfield. And that's one of the things coming into this game that I was interested to see with the big wide receivers for UCLA and some inexperienced corners on the outside with Maurice Jones, number 16 there, and Kevin Crowboth. 
uh, for Temple how they would match up with uh, this Pac-10 style open offense and they have done a tremendous job today. That's the third or fourth time they've had to throw the ball away and Prince uh, not being able to find open receivers downfield. Second down and ten underneath taking a hit but holding on to the football was Terrence Austin. Marquise Liverpool had the big interception of the first half. Came up to make the stop and Liverpool's just an athlete. He was actually drafted by the Seattle Mariners in 2004 as a baseball player. And he came to Temple originally as a wide receiver. Then last year they moved him to running back. Now they got him at cornerback but his hands helped him in the first half with a big pick. Third and one. Moline right up the middle. Not sure he got there. Andre Neblet drove him back. Second effort may have gotten him to the first down marker. It just depends on the spot. I don't think he got it. Good job up front, as you said. Andre Neblet, the senior captain for this Temple on defense. Stout in the middle. And a lot of people think that he could be playing in, in the NFL next year as a 3 4 nose guard, but brings up an interesting decision. Fourth and one, and it looks like UCLA is going to go for it. Fourth down and a foot for the Bruins. Prince will try and throw for it on a rollout. Has Austin down the sideline. Touchdown. Terrence Austin got loose. Temple sold out for the run. They came out with an all out zero coverage blitz and Norm Chow picks out of the West Coast offense the sprint right option. The quarterback rolls out good accurate throw to Austin and one uh, broken tackle turns into a touchdown for the Bruins. So just the start that Rick Neuheisel was looking for for his offense in the third quarter. Good kickoff return by Austin to start it. Austin finishes it. And Forbath adds the extra point. And now it's a four point game early in the third. One missed tackle by Liverpool, and the second all time leading all purpose guy in Bruin history takes it the distance. There's nothing like a family get together during the holidays. Good food, fun, and a little sibling rivalry. Introducing the Cadillac season's best event. For attractive offers on all Cadillac models, see your dealer for details. From our family to yours, season's best from Cadillac. Log on today and save on thousands of products to fill any room in your house. And come to Overstock.com to enter our hybrid holiday sweepstakes, your chance to win a Toyota Prius. Overstock.com, at home with the O. Most people make resolutions based on what they see on the outside. This year, focus on what's inside and let Cheerios help tackle your cholesterol. Now you could win a free box to get started. When the world's greatest detective has a question, who does he ask? Oh, here's a text from Mr. Holmes. He needs to know what this poison is. Elementary, my dear. You know he never actually says that, right? I was just... Well, how about we just answer the question? It could be a matter of life or death. Okay, okay. It's a toxin refined from the nectar of the rhododendron ponticum. It does make a considerable difference to me having someone with me on whom I can thoroughly rely. Sherlock Holmes, now in theaters. Want movie info and showtimes? Text your question to 542542.
there are over 400,000 NCAA student athletes. And just about all of us will be going pro in something other than sports. It's not Southern California weather, to say the least, but UCLA red hot right out of the locker room. A quick touchdown to start the third quarter. Terrence Austin goes across from 32 yards out. And it's a four point lead for Temple. It's Terrence Austin, a very dangerous weapon, averages about 137 all purpose yards per game. He's already passed that in this game. Brown from the five brings it back for the hours. Matt Brown with some blockers out in front gets snatched back at about the 31 yard line. Let's go back to the touchdown. Let's take a look. I like the aggressive call by Norm Chow. Fourth and one. No safety selling out to stop the run. Here's Austin going to run the quick out. One missed tackle by Liverpool and he goes the distance but a good accurate throw on the run from Prince and a good block there by Embry on the outside. Taylor Embry makes the block and the rest is, is history right here. 82 gets the block. And then outrunning Liverpool on the outside is Austin and gets UCLA back into this football game with some momentum. But an aggressive call by Norm Chow on fourth and one led to the touchdown. Play action fake all the time in the world for Charlton. Still holding on to the football. Now he'll tuck it under and run. There he goes to the 50 and into plus territory before he's finally run out by airs. They're looking for the deep play action pass again to try to get the momentum back and good coverage downfield and Charlton looks back for his check down. He's not there. Now what do I do? Okay, well, maybe I'll run. Well, let me make one guy miss. Now I get about 20 yards. A good decision, but sometimes as a quarterback, you look for one thing and you get another and you got to make the, the quick good decision. And uh, right there, he did that. Injured Bruin down on the field. I'm wondering how many times in Brian Greasy's career did you say in the middle of a play now what do I do. <laughs> Is there like a per game number you can put well, on that. Well, <laughs> a, a per game average too, too many. <laughs> Hopefully it's not per game it was per year or per career but uh, you know that's just one of those things playing that playing the quarterback position that uh, you, sometimes it doesn't work out like you planned it in practice the play doesn't work and you got to make something happen. And, Hopefully you don't think about it, you just react. Well, speaking of hopefully for UCLA's case, hopefully Brian Price is okay. Number 92 on the left side of your picture there goes down in pursuit of Vaughn Charlton. And he may have simply gotten the wind knocked out as he comes off to the sideline on his own. But that is not only the defensive player of the year in the Pac-10, but a junior at 6'2", 300 pounds that's looked upon as probably a top 15 to top 20 draft choice in this year's NFL draft if he comes out. Turning the corner is Brown. There he goes. Matt Brown down to the 25-yard line, inside the 20, before he's finally brought down from behind at the 18. Corey Bosworth may have saved a touchdown. Tremendous speed on the part of Brown getting to the outside. They pull the tight end, Maneri, to get a block on the outside, and then it's just speed up into the hole. Reminds me a little bit of Dave Meggett wearing 22, you know, playing in the Bill Parcell system and getting into the secondary. He is a tremendous changeup for, for Temple. Brown again up the middle. Down to about the 14 yard line for a gain of four. That Brown getting a lot of playing time in this in this game, spelling Pierce, who's had, as we said, the two shoulders this this season, trying to keep the wear and tear off of their freshman All-American. But that Brown is holding his own against this UCLA defense. Second down and a long six, close to seven, just inside the 15. Brown right up the middle. Close to the 10 yard line before he is brought down. It sets up third down and two. 
you see a clear focus on the part of Temple now with Brian Price on the sideline. Now he comes back in the game, but on the sideline for the past three plays, three runs up the middle for Temple, trying to take advantage of Price being out of the game. Temple gets back to the line quickly, and then Charlton looks over to the sideline. Third down and two. The toss to Matt Brown. Breaks a tackle, and it looks like he might have the first down. Kyle Bosworth had a chance to bring him down shy of the sticks. Well, third and two, and Brian Price comes back in the game, so they decide to run outside, not inside. Good idea, and a tremendous run by Matt Brown. Looked like he was stopped for a no loss by Bosworth right there, but tremendous second effort. Moves the sticks. It doesn't actually. No. He's marked down shy. And if I was Al Golden, I might think about either looking for a replay or maybe even using my coach's challenge on the spot. And now the officials are going to stop play. They may have had it buzzed down from the booth to the see where the ball should play be. Is under further review. It looked as if he dove inside the eight-yard line before his elbow hit. I think, based on the look we just got, let's take another look that. Matt Brown may have been robbed of a half yard or so on the spot. Oh yeah, looked like he got down inside to the seven potentially. He's not still down up. yet, still up. Oh, his elbow came down right but, on the eight. But right about at the eight yard line. And they yeah. have him marked down at least a foot to two feet shy of the eight yard line. The ball's barely inside the nine. Well, he has put on a show. Look at Matt Brown, boy, in the open field. He's just tough to catch. You got to give a guy credit. You got to give him credit. Look at the the, the effort. At five five, 176 pounds. Uh, he is he has been dynamite in this game, breaking tackles, making guys miss, fighting for extra yards. Fourth down. Wow. So they say the ruling on the field stands, and the ball is in its proper place. Mm. Certainly didn't look that way on the replay. But I think Al Golden's going to go for it anyway. The way they've been running the ball in this the second half and throughout this game, I would too. And it's still Matt Brown in a tailback. You wonder if Bernard Pierce might be shaken up. It looked like he got shaken up on the last drive before halftime for Temple. In a short yardage situation, you would think it would be Pierce more than Brown if Pierce were healthy. Fourth down and a foot. Brown into a wall. UCLA defenders and I don't think he got there boy it all depends on the spot uh, I don't know if that's the most high percentage to go right over center where Brian Price is living but uh, that's what they decided to do and I don't think they got there he lost a half a yard so UCLA turns over Temple on downs as Temple tries to go right up the middle with their five foot five, 165 pound running back against the heart of that de defense for UCLA. Reggie Carter came in and made the hit. Big stop for UCLA. There's nothing like a family get together during the holidays. Good food, fun, and a little sibling rivalry. Introducing the Cadillac Season's Best Event. See your Cadillac dealer for attractive offers. From our family to yours, Season's Best from Cadillac. Hey, Vincent! Go State! Hey, Ham. Why did that guy call you Vincent? Because that's my real name, Bergwood. It is? How do you know that? He's my Allstate agent. Oh, he insures your car. And my boat. You got a boat? Ah, my wife is a big time skier. Mm -hmm. You're married? All state agents know who you really are and help you save money by combining your car insurance with home, boat, and more. Are you in good hands? Where'd you meet your wife? Pilates. Ah, uh, she's European. Excuse me. When you get a minute, can. Can you get a minute?
Not too heavy, not too light. Bud Light. The difference is drinking. Now playing on DirecTV Cinema. Vegas! Four friends. Where are you guys? We lost our three friends. And we're the three best friends that anybody could have. And one night they'll never forget. What is this? That is my tooth. Why do you have that? From the director of Old School. Trust me, kids, you do not want to be sitting on these benches. <laughs> the Hangover. Movies playing on channels 125 through 199. ESPN College Football, the Eagle Bank Bowl, is brought to you by Eagle Bank, we're listening, and Allstate, proud sponsor of college football and the Allstate Sugar Bowl. Are you in good hands? Welcome back to Washington, D.C., and happy holidays. It's the Eagle Bank Bowl. Temple just turned it over on downs, and UCLA trailing 21-10 at halftime, came out and scored to start the third quarter. And now they go back to the ground and Shane Maline powers his way out to about the 15 yard line but the third down play is the key play here as we go back and look at Brown did he get to the first down marker before his elbow or a knee came down yeah, and it clearly looks like his elbow comes down right on the line the question was did the official think his knee hit before that didn't look like it on the replay but the official may not have seen conclusive video evidence to overturn the call on the field that's why they marked it back. A lead again on second down. A yard and a half shy of a first down it'll be third down and short Alex Joseph tripped him up for Temple and you also wonder about how dubious the play call might have been Brian the decision to go for it on fourth down and a foot and also the decision if you don't have your power back available to go to a five foot five 165 pound running back right into the middle of that UCLA defense. Yeah and to give him the ball you know and uh, try to run right up to the uh, butt of Brian Price uh, best defensive player you know it's it's interesting they could have kicked a field goal gone up by a touchdown which could have been big in this ball game. You can see UCLA has struggled on third and short this year. They'll try and throw for it with Prince. Underneath. Fight for the football, and it looks like the fight is won by Terrence Austin. No, they'll rule it incomplete. It looked like Austin had that had possession of the ball. Elijah Joseph, number 58. Oh yeah, ball clearly comes out. We just didn't see it, but ball clearly comes out. Good play by Joseph, and it, it seems like UCLA has come out now and said we have to throw the football almost exclusively. That first drive they had a lot of success, almost exclusive through the air. Right there, they try to run the ball on first and second down. They go three and out. Delano Green will let it bounce again. And again, it takes a nice roll for UCLA all the way inside the 40-yard line of Temple. We'll step aside after a 43 yard punt. Temple holding on to a four point lead here in the Eagle Bank Bowl at RFK. The BCS National Championship Game, Texas, Alabama, January 7th on ABC. Opportunity. At Amway Global, it's the foundation of our business because Opportunity built Neutralite, the world's top selling vitamin, mineral, and supplement brand. And Artistry, one of the world's best-selling beauty brands, which makes Amway Global the online health and beauty leader. And worldwide, Amway has over $8 billion in annual sales. For your opportunity to be part of this success and to start making more money for yourself, contact an Amway Global independent business owner or visit AmwayGlobal.com. Last year, I joined the Wounded Warrior Project to help raise awareness for the men and women who have suffered traumatic injuries in the war on terror. They need our help. Through the Wounded Warrior Project, you can help get these heroes back into life's mainstream. Log on to WoundedWarriorProject.org to find out more about this fine organization that is helping these returning injured veterans and their families with their new lives. The greatest casualty is being forgotten. Let's make sure this doesn't happen to my brave friends. Thank, Thank you. you. Let's put a few thousand kilowatts in a vice. Squeeze some savings back into our budget into our attics and walls. Let's locate the original energy source called you and turn that machine up full blast. More saving, more doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. 
Get even more savings on our 30, 15-inch insulation with the incredible price of just $9.37 per roll. SEC and Big Ten powers collide when the legendary Joe Paterno leads the Nittany Lions against LSU. Bowl week continues with the Capital One Bowl, Penn State LSU. New Year's Day at 1 Eastern on ABC. College football lives here. Rob Stone back in Washington, D.C. Temple on top by four, but they are without their star running back, Bernard Pierce. That's a live look right now. He's in that full body poncho, guys, right now. And Temple does not hand out any medical information, so it's up to me to tell you what I'm seeing. And what I'm seeing through his nonverbals, guys, a guy who doesn't look like he's going to be playing again. He's kind of done the, the shake of the head like, no, I'm not going in a few times to his players. He's still taped up. He still has his uniform, but, guys, a helmet nowhere in sight for him. All right, Rob, thanks very much. To the air then for Temple. Tip ball at the line. And it's incomplete. Bernard Pierce, the Mac freshman of the year, first team all conference. His 16th rushing touchdown came in the first half of this game. The averages just under 120 yards rushing per game came into today as the 11th most prolific running rushing back in college football. And yet he is now out of the game, or so it seems. And Matt Brown and Lamar McPherson will have to share tailback duties and it has been for the most part Matt Brown and that's Brown number 22 in on second down attempt. Low throw can't be scooped up on the far side by Joe Jones. So now it's third down and 10. Well, and, and that's a huge loss for Temple obviously offensively and you're seeing the effects almost immediately with Temple coming out in this series attempting two drop back passes to start the series and two incompletions puts them behind the eight ball here at third and ten not where they want to be so they are clearly missing Bernard Pierce despite the fact that Matt Brown's having a great game. Bruins bring a blitz on third down. Brown makes the catch in space. No chance. A gain of six yards. Andrew Abbott racked him up at the 45 yard line. So it's three downs and out for Temple without their star back. And it's really interesting the play calling there in that drive. The last drive they had a lot of success with Brown in there running the ball in first down play action. That is what they do. That's the bread and butter for Temple and for them to come. Uh, it's a little bit baffling. Brownell again to punt. Low snap, scoops it up, barely gets the kick away. Aaron Austin calls for a fair catch and a flag down. The fair catch made it about the 28 yard line, but it looks like Brownell may have been roughed. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Number 20 in the defense. Glenn Love called for the personal foul, a free first down for Temple in plus territory. And a low snap. He had to take a little bit more time, and the defense was closer to him. Looks like it was running into the kicker, but they called the 15-yard variety, and Ronnell, despite the fact that he hasn't punted much, has had a few acting classes at Temple. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was fourth down and four, so a five-yard running into the kicker penalty would have still resulted in a first down. Temple still would have gotten the ball back, but... They'll take the extra 10 yards all the way down to the 40 yard line of UCLA. Play action for Charlton. Throwing it down the sideline. Jump ball. Intercepted. Picked off by Raheem Moore. His 10th interception of the season. He is number one in the nation. And Vaughn Charlton may have been shaken up as he got hit just as he released the ball. It looked like he whipped his arm there and came down awkward on top of that arm, but a ill-advised throw, and Raheem Moore is a shark back there in the secondary. Leads the nation in interception, now his 10th on the year. Uh, he's got great hands, but a jump ball right there by Charlton, and 
not the point in time in the game on especially on first down where you needed to take that chance with the football. Big turnover. At least from a field position standpoint, it's almost like a punt. But it came on first down. Moline lost a couple of yards. Back to the five. Dominique Harris comes on a run blitz and brings him down. Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN. Tomorrow, a pair of games for you. First at 4.30 Eastern. Bowling Green will take on the Vandals of Idaho in the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl. And at 8 Eastern, number 20, Arizona. Number 22, Nebraska in the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN360.com comes up tomorrow. I'm not sure if you've heard, but Indomitian Sue's pretty good. <laughs> That's are, my scouting report. <laughs> Those are the kind of guys that make me happy that I'm retired. <laughs> Watching him play football. Prince from the end zone. Finds a man at about the 14 yard line. It's Nelson Rosario. We go back to that interception. And I know it looks like it's it's harmless. You know, usually gets the ball inside their 10 yard line and it looks like a punt. But what it does is it takes Temple out of position to have a potential field goal. They had the ball on UCLA's 45 yard line. You, you think once you get into the opponent's side of the field, you're at least going to get a field goal, maybe a touchdown. So uh, at this point in the game, with everything that Al Golden has preached about protecting the football and eliminating negative plays, that's just a big mistake by Charlton. Third down and four. Prince after a pump fake will die for it, and he has the first down. Scrambles right up the middle. To hear Whitehead couldn't bring him down before he got the first down. Well, they're going to mark him short. It looked like he dove across the 17 yard line and they mark him down a foot short. Let's take another look. He did and Temple drops eight. Good job by Prince of pulling it down and it clearly yeah, it did look like his butt and shoulder were down before he got to that first down line and uh, looked like a good good spot by the official. The key also was that he had the ball in his right hand and it seemed like the ball was kind of behind his back. So his body reached the first down marker, but the ball didn't. Another punt that Delano Green allows to bounce, and it takes a big roll. He has given up a lot of field position today by not fielding punts on the fly. Momentum shifts back and forth. The last one, an interception thrown by Temple, but their defense holds. They get the football right back. They continue to impress against a Pac-10 team in an unfamiliar position being in a ball game. Well Temple defensively has been outstanding. Al Golden decides to go for it on fourth and short down there. What happens? His defense bails him out gets a three and out after that series and then an interception again a three and out. So Temple defensively is keeping them in the lead. Any play calling changes they have to make without their top running back. As they go to McPherson and he busts into the secondary and has a first down. An 11 yard gain. Do you see in terms of Matt Rule calling plays without Bernard Pierce a change philosophically at all? I don't think so. I think they need to continue to run the ball on first down and play action, mix it in 50 50. Matt Brown has proven that he can run in between the tackles as well as outside. And a good run there by McPherson. That is what got them here and changed this whole program around was this offensive line. And really, whether whoever's running the ball back there, there's going to be holes because these guys are good up front. Toss to Brown. Spins out of a tackle. And does a good job to pick up about two yards. Brian Price made the stop. Now let's go back to the last play that Bernard Pierce played before going out. That was in the second quarter. And it looked like maybe on the left arm he took a pretty good shot. And you could see the left arm kind of hanging dead at his side as he came to the sideline. We haven't seen him since that play in the second quarter. You know, and that's a shoulder. When that arm hangs down like that, that typically is a shoulder, and he has had some problems with those shoulders this season. So hopefully it's not too bad. Round up the middle on second and seven. About three more yards of a setup, third down and four. Temple in the first half on first down averaged eight yards a play. Tremendous average for them, and that's what allowed them to be in these manageable situations, third and five or less. And what that does is they can either 
run the football in this situation or throw it. And more importantly, UCLA has to defend both. So that's right where Al Golden and Matt Rule want to be in that range on third down. Third down and a long four. Play clock down to seven. Charlton will try and throw for it. Under pressure and sack. Reggie Carter got him, second sack of the day for UCLA. And Temple will have to punt again. And UCLA comes on the blitz. Reggie Carter, 51, kind of delays. Nobody's open downfield, and Charlton didn't have much time there to, to throw the football. And talking with Matt Rule, he said that the blitz on third down hurt them in their last game against Ohio, and clearly UCLA saw something on film and has decided to bring the blitz as well tonight. Another wobbly kick from Brownell. Austin feels it in traffic. Didn't call for a fair catch. Brought down just shy of the 30 yard line. And Friday, New Year's Day at 4.30 Eastern, ABC brings you the Rose Bowl game presented by City. Number eight, Ohio State. Number seven, Oregon. And then at thurs on Thursday, January 7th at 8 p.m., the national championship is on the line between Texas and Alabama. The City BCS national championship game and the Rose Bowl game, both coming up next week on ABC. And both games at the Rose Bowl. I know ESPN and ABC went in and did a kind of their own personal overhaul of the Rose Bowl, getting set for that game. Out of the shotgun Prince. Here comes the blitz. Somehow he escapes the sack. And misses a wide open Taylor Embry. But Wilbert Brinson came on a safety blitz and had a free shot and couldn't bring down Kevin Prince. Yeah, Prince is going to come from the outside and it looked like Prince didn't see him, but he was looking right at him. Maybe he was trying to give him the rope a dope, and then he just did, couldn't get his shoulders turned around to get the ball to Embry. But you know, sometimes when you're back there, you try to act like you don't see somebody, and then when they get close to you, like a bullfighter, when you turn your back to the bull, and then you just slip right underneath him. That's how he used to do it. At least that's how I tried to do it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> off to Moline and the end around fake as well didn't fool the Temple defensive interior as Peanut Joseph was there to make the stop after a gain of about a yard and a half so UCLA has a third down and long this might take us to the end of the third quarter the play clock has about six more seconds on it than the game clock does let's see if Rick Neuheisel opts to just let the clock wind all the way down and it looks like that is exactly what's going to happen so Temple Playing in a bowl game for the first time since the Garden State Bowl in 1979. It's been 30 years since Temple's played in a bowl. They'll take a lead to the fourth quarter of the Eagle Bank Bowl over UCLA. And to have done it to this point without their star running back is a feat. Red Bull, New Year, No Limits, New Year's Eve on ESPN. There's nothing like a family get-together during the holidays. Good food, fun, and a little sibling rivalry. Introducing the Cadillac Season's Best Event. For attractive offers on all Cadillac models, see your dealer for details. From our family to yours, Season's Best from Cadillac. Overwhelmed with credit card debt? President Obama recently signed the stimulus plan to re-energize our troubled economy. But where was the bailout for the general public struggling with credit card debt? Fortunately, if you owe $10,000 or more to credit card companies, help is available. Call Consumer Debt Advocate for assistance and free information. The toll-free number is 1-800-946-2736. If you have debt of $10,000 or more, you may begin calling now. Debt assistance is available for members of the public in serious need of debt relief. The information is free, courtesy of Consumer Debt Advocate. Our debt relief consultants have already advised thousands of people just like you. You could save thousands of dollars. Viewers with debt of $10,000 or more needing credit card relief are urged to call immediately for free information. This is a confidential call. 
The toll-free number is 1-800-946-2736. Again, 1-800-946-2736. This is one of those games people will be talking about for a long time. Can you imagine how you would feel if you missed this game? I mean, you're some guy at an airport waiting for your flight. It's delayed. You're sitting next to your buddy who's asleep, throwing pistachio nuts into his mouth. Tragic. Log on to ESPN360.com to see all your favorite sports live. It's where to watch when you can't watch. What's that? Your flight announcement? No. It's life passing you by. The UFC is kicking off 2010 with a card stacked full of knockout kings. When former light heavyweight champ Sugar Rashad Evans takes on jiu-jitsu black belt Tiago Silva and British striker Paul Daly battles submission specialist Dustin Hazlett. Plus heavyweight phenom Junior Dos Santos against pride sensation Gilbert Ivel. Bayonetta presents UFC 108 Evans vs. Silva. Live Saturday, January 2nd from the MGM Grand Garden Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada on DirecTV Pay-Per-View. You value your friends. So does DirecTV. Bob's worth 100. So are Carrie, Ann, and Sue. For every friend you refer to DirecTV, you get $100. And they get $100 on top of our new customer offer. Just give your account number to your friends and have them call 1-877-4100 each. They must have your account number when they order. This offer is only good for a limited time. So hurry. Then celebrate and watch the Benjamins stack up. We start the fourth quarter of the Eagle Bank Bowl here in Washington at RFK. Temple has a four-point lead on UCLA and a big play to start the fourth quarter. UCLA faced with third down and nine. Four-man rush. Wobbly pass makes it to the sideline and Taylor Embry and a UCLA first down to midfield. Good job converting on the outside. Embry, when you have a frozen field, you got to stay out over your toes. Does a good job, and it's hard to change direction from a defensive back's perspective to get up and challenge that throw. And Liverpool right there played with so much cushion that he basically gave that first down to UCLA. But sometimes when the field is bad, advantage offense because the defender has the difficulty changing direction. Comes the blitz. Prince flips it wide left. It'll be second down and ten. Suafilo was the closest player to that football, and he's the left tackle. Oh, how he could throw the ball back. Here's Suafilo. I hear he's a left tackle. Little rollout by Prince and tries to throw the ball back to him. That is not a legal play. Uh, that would be illegal even if he did catch that ball. Um, if he catches it backwards, it would have been legal, but I'm not sure that that, that ball would have been backwards. So play interesting clock. play. Play clock at one. Prince just beats the play clock, gets the play off. Flips one underneath and he finds Malin. Malin in the open field, running men over at the 30, still on his feet. All the way down to about the 23-yard line. I look like Brian Greasy flipping it off to Mike Allstock there, didn't it? <laughs> well, they call they call Shane Moline train, train Moline, and there he is right here. He's going to catch the screen pass, and a good job of getting downfield. A nice little flick there from Prince, but when he gets in that secondary, and there's not one defensive back back there in that secondary that wants to mess with number 42 right there. He weighs 250 pounds, six foot one, and he's a mean. Uh, Mean guy, I don't want to meet him in the alley. Trap handoff to Jonathan Franklin. Franklin gets down to about the 19-yard line. Talking to Rick Neuhausel about Franklin, told a funny story. He said his name, or his nickname, is Jet Ski. And that's because when Jonathan Franklin was young, he would play on dirt fields in L.A., and the dirt would kick up behind him like the weight coming out from behind a jet ski. <laughs> well, UCLA has a package of players, a personnel package they'd call Jet, 
So when Rick Neuheisel was calling for Jet, all the players thought that that was Jonathan Franklin was supposed to go in the game. He wasn't a part of that package. And they kept getting confused. And now we've got flags at a false start. So we said to Rick Neuheisel. False start, 75. Offense. Five-yard penalty remains second down. Senator Rick Neuhauser, well, do you think maybe about changing the name of the personnel package? I said, no, I'm the coach. <laughs> I call the personnel package the way I want to call the personnel package. I told the players, instead of calling them Jet Ski, just call them Ski. Change the guy's nickname. <laughs> Don't change my personnel package. Well, Jonathan Franklin is a great story from South Central L.A., Dorsey High. And they play, did play on a dirt field, and now they have a new, brand-new turf field at Dorsey because Jonathan Franklin and Raheem Moore, the safety, helped them out financially. Rains under pressure after a play-action fake. Throws it wide of Moline. Pressure was coming from Adrian Robinson. It's a great example for you know, the kids that live in inner city Los Angeles that they can make it at a place like UCLA as Jonathan Franklin is now contributing and Raheem Moore, the, the uh, All-American safety, uh, both came out of Dorsey High School. And, and Rick Neuheisel knows the importance of, of getting talented recruits out of inner city L.A. and the tremendous amount of talent that they have there. He's doing a good job finding them. UCLA only two for ten on third down. Here comes the blitz again. Brantz down the sideline, incomplete. Right through the hands of Logan Paulson. A tremendous throw there by Prince, and Paulson gets man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. He's right here, he's gonna get down the field, and Prince puts the ball right in the, in the bread basket, and Paulson can't come down with it. Would have been a uh, tremendous catch, but a catch that he can make nonetheless, proven he can make it. Ty Forbath has made 36 consecutive kicks from under 50 yards. This one from 42. And there's number 37 in a row right down the middle. And it's a one point game with 12 and a half minutes to play. UCLA, though, was just this close to a touchdown. Right in the bread basket. Another missed opportunity for the Bruins. You know, Geico opened its doors back in 1936, and now we're insuring over 18 million drivers. Quite impressive, yeah. Come a long way, that's for sure. And so have you since you started working here way back when. Ah, uh, I st I'll still have nightmares. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. AT&T covers 97% of all Americans. It's over 300 million people. I've collected a few postcards of all the places that AT&T has coverage. Spokane, Washington. Boston, Mass. San Francisco. Tulsa, Oklahoma. Dated a girl from there. Warren, Michigan. Didn't work out. Bozeman, Montana. Daytona Beach, Florida. Madison, Wisconsin. College Town. I think we get the picture. If you want coverage, we've got it. AT&T. This holiday, get a touchscreen Samsung Solstice free after mail-in rebate. Is it the fact that our vehicles have the highest expected resale value of any luxury brand that makes them so impressive? Or is it the fact that we have the only full line of five-star safety rated sedans? Or is it both? Test drive any Acura at the Drive Home Safely for the Holidays event. Take advantage of attractive lease rates on the 2010 Acura TL for well-qualified customers. Here's the men's room marathon. Going over and over. Now the night game. Waking up to go. These guys should see their doctors. Those could be urinary symptoms due to BPH, an enlarged prostate. But for many guys, prescription Flomax reduces their urinary symptoms due to BPH in one week. Only your doctor can tell if you have BPH, not a more serious condition like prostate cancer. When taking Flomax, avoid driving or hazardous tasks until you know how Flomax will affect you, as a sudden drop in blood pressure may occur, rarely resulting in fainting. Tell your doctor about all medications you take. If considering cataract surgery, tell your eye surgeon you've taken Flomax. Common side effects are runny nose, dizziness, and decrease in semen. Ask your doctor if Flomax is right for you. For many men, Flomax can make a difference in one week. 
I'm Reese Davis with your Flomax Bowl update. Texas Tech head coach Mike Leach is seeking a temporary restraining order that would allow him to guide the Red Raiders against Michigan State in the January 2nd Valero Alamo Bowl. A hearing is set for 8.30 a.m. Wednesday morning in Lubbock in the 99th District Court. Leach, of course, was suspended amidst allegations that he mistreated an injured player. Much more on that coming up on Sports Center later on and throughout our coverage of Bowl Week. That is your Flomax Bowl update, guys. All right, Reese, thanks very much. Happy holidays from Washington and the Eagle Bank Bowl here at RFK. It's a one point game now as UCLA has scored the last 10 points since halftime, cutting a 21 to 10 halftime lead by Temple down to 21 to 20. Two and a half minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. Matt Brown and James Nixon deep to receive the kick from Locke. It's a very short kick down the sideline takes a bounce and floats out of bounds which will bring Temple all the way out to their own 40 yard line to start this drive and UCLA has missed some opportunities to make some big plays in the passing game well, they certainly have I mean early in the game big opportunity with a hole in the middle of the field and Kevin Prince just misses Austin almost throws an interception in the same play here again had opening in the middle of the field and Prince is not able to connect overthrows for an interception and then the last play throws a great ball on the outside to Paulson who just can't come down off his fingertips would have been a touchdown but for uh, UCLA some missed opportunities have hurt them throughout this game. And Temple moved the football without Bernard Pierce still on the sideline Matt Brown in a tailback. with the carry tripped up behind the line. Brian Price came into today with 22 and a half tackles for loss tied for third in the nation and he's got a couple today. And right there you see the speed and the explosion of Brian Price over 300 pounds and still has the quickness to get through get in the backfield and just disrupt that running play and that's that's his biggest asset is that he is disruptive. And whether it's the running game or the passing game, that's what the, the pro scouts like about him. Brown with a cutback. But he's brought down from behind by Brian Price. Well, and he's decided he's, decided he's going to play this series right here. Watch him run down the 5, 576 pound Brown. I mean, that's uh, <laughs> there he is before the game without his shirt on, trying to psych himself up about the cold weather. You know he's from South Central L.A. and you don't get much cold weather down there with those parts. But Price showing tremendous athletic ability on the last two plays to take over this game. Third down and 12. Aaron throw by Charlton. Three downs and out for Temple. And all the momentum right now going UCLA's way. And a big reason why is Brian Price. He is. I mean, with all due respect to the Mac. Brian Greasy Brian Price is a different type of player than that offensive line has ever been asked to block this season. Well and he's you know he's not just about the Pac-10 or the Mac or what he he's one of the top three defensive linemen in the country and uh, he has shown it in that last series why you kind of wonder where he was in the beginning of this game when Temple was running the ball with a lot of effectiveness but by the way he's come to play in the second half. Ron Ells punt again a wobbly kick. Austin fields it at the 31 yard line makes the first man miss and spins all the way out to the 40. Let's go down and check in with Rob. All right Bob here's your fourth quarter visual on how cold it is. These are your you know your Gatorade water bottle tops right. The sports medicine folks over at UCLA have to come over to the heaters now to actually dissolve them so they can operate. <laughs> Hard to get the liquids when it's frozen, right? I learned that in chemistry not too long ago. And here's Rick Newhausen on the sideline, guys. After the last score for UCLA, came right back to his offensive team and said, guys, after we score, we're going for two. Always upbeat is that Coach Newhausen, isn't he? <laughs> you know, Rob's, Rob's lips seem to be getting a little bit frozen, too. And I can relay because you're in the huddle trying to call a play and your lips don't work. It's too cold. Just keep your lips away from the heater, Rob. Play action. Prince on the move sends it up the sideline. Damian Thigpen for about five yards. Let's take a 
take a look at our game summary here in the Eagle Bank Bowl. A one-point lead for Temple at this point. A little over four minutes gone by in the fourth quarter. Uh, Kevin Prince has heated up here in the second half as it's gotten colder. It looks like the wind has died down, but he's gotten a more effective throwing the football in the second half. Moline. Nothing there. Lost about three yards. Peanut Joseph came through to make the stop again. And those negative plays are a killer. You know, they had second and three and a half. They lose two yards here, get to a third and six, but Peanut Joseph is shot out of a cannon, gets up and Temple's having no problem with the speed of, of UCLA or the speed of this game. And uh, a lot to, lot to be said for the football that's being played in the MAC. Uh, and the talent level of this defense, especially for Temple, they can play with anybody in the country. Here comes the blitz on third and eight. Prince throws on the run to the sideline and has a first down. Nelson Rosario, about three yards past the first down marker, out of bounds in plus territory. And again, we talked about the last third down throw. That when the footing is tough on the outside, the advantage is to the receiver. You see right there, difficult time for Maurice Jones in transition, and all it takes is a, a yard or two for a receiver to be open and for the connection from the quarterback. So good job in buying some time by Prince rolling out. Good play call by Norm Chow to go back to what's working on third down, and that's the comeback route on the outside to Embry. A toss heading back the other direction is Thigpen. And that play blows up. It's a loss of five yards. Adrian Robinson stayed home, and Thigpen ran right into his arms. And another interesting call. Looked like he tried to hide to come back, and there was nothing doing on the, on the weak side. And Adrian Robinson, their defensive player of the year, was there. And, Couple of interesting calls from Norm Chow. That one and then the, the screen back to the left tackle. A uh, couple of interesting calls on, on first down. And it just it's a killer when you have negative plays on first down. Now you're behind the down and distance. It's second and 14, and you gotta throw the ball. Prince sets up the screen. Big Penn with some blockers out in front. Picks up five yards, the five that he lost. But it'll be third down and at least nine, close to ten. And the way UCLA is attacking now, I think, is very telling with their respect for Temple. The way that Temple is defending the run, not allowing Moline to get uh, any yardage on the ground. Uh, they have to come up with some creative ways to get yards, and it's just been very impressive to me to watch Temple defensively. And I think Norm Chow is very impressed with them as well, trying to, to find different ways to get, get yardage. Prince under pressure, he'll be sacked. At midfield, brought down by Muhammad Wilkerson. Eighth sack of the year for Wilkerson, and the second on the day for Temple. Yeah, when you're in third and long, we've talked about it all night, is that it's difficult, and nobody opened downfield, and Wilkerson has uh, been tremendous on the defensive line for Temple. Another one of those all-Mac performers. Uh, Alex Joseph got in there as well, so. Good rush by Temple. Delano Green calls for a fair catch and fields in traffic at the 17, maybe the 18 yard line. It could be an historic drive coming up for Temple. 6.58 to go in the fourth quarter. And the Owls have a one point lead. Most people make resolutions based on what they see on the outside. This year, focus on what's inside and let Cheerios help tackle your cholesterol. Now you could win a free box to get started. Hi, is uh, Denise working? Yeah, she's in the back. Can I take your order? I'm just a little bit more comfortable ordering with Denise. Hey, hi. You remember me? I came by yesterday and gave me that five-layer burrito. That new one for... Um... 89 cents. Is that cool? Is that still cool? It's an inside deal for everyone. Layers of seasoned beef, cheddar cheese, and a hidden layer of nacho cheese sauce. It's Taco Bell's new beefy five-layer burrito for just 89 cents. 
Why pay more? Get ready to extend the pain. With the Hangover unrated version, it's completely outrageous. Oh, funny. <laughs> Includes 100 new photos from the missing camera. Oh, dear. The Hangover unrated. Buy it on Blu-ray and DVD. You know what 2.30 in the afternoon feels like, right? Sleepy? No. Groggy? No. Dying for a nap? What do you do? Run for the coffee? Grab a soda? But how long does that last before you're back for more? Try this instead. Take one five-hour energy, then see what the rest of your day feels like. Sure won't feel like 2.30 anymore. Or 3.30. Or 4.30. Five-hour energy. Hours of energy now, no 2.30 feeling later. Introducing the all-new Jumpstart Kit from Nutrisystem, specially designed to put you on the fast track to awesome weight loss. I'm Dan Marino, and I lost 22 pounds. That's me, 32 pounds ago. I feel like I'm 10 years younger. I did go all the way. I lost 50 pounds. Order now, and you can get two weeks of meals free. Plus, get the all-new Jumpstart Kit, our secrets to ultimate weight loss. 50 years old, and back to my playing weight. Jumpstart your year. ESPN College Football, the Eagle Bank Bowl, is brought to you by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And Cheerios, 100% natural whole grain oats and one single gram of sugar. Where better to make some history than in Washington, D.C.? And Temple has a chance to do that here in the fourth quarter. Under seven minutes to go, the last time Temple won a bowl game was the last time they played in a bowl game 30 years ago in 1979 in the Garden State Bowl. Brown on first down lost at least three yards. Jersey Sawerski made the stop. He lost three yards and lost his helmet. How long has it been since Temple won a bowl game. The number one movie was Star Trek the motion picture. Wow, the number one song, the Pina Colada song by Rupert Holmes. <laughs> Never even heard of it. Jimmy Carter was in the White House, and Martin Sheen hosted Saturday Night Live. Well, Martin Sheen's still famous. Yeah, he's for the wrong reasons but lately. But Al Golden is ten, was 10 years old. Now he's the Mac Coach of the Year. <laughs> and he's got Temple in position to maybe cap one of the best seasons they've ever had in football, and certainly the best they've had since then. Doing well to get the ball away was Charlton threw it to no man's land. Kyle Bosworth came with pressure and this will be intentional grounding. Yeah, he's clearly inside the pocket and uh, just flung that to the sideline. And this drive's going backwards. Intentional grounding. Looked like uh, there was looked like he was supposed to get a block on the weak side from Brown. He just went right by the linebacker, and then he just didn't have any opportunity to escape. And Bosworth had him to dead to rights, and you just can't throw the ball away like that. And the problem now is you're going in the wrong direction for you for Temple, and you're losing field position, only up by one. You got a kick out of your own end zone. You're almost guaranteed to give up three points on the other side. For a touchdown. Not the first time we have seen Akeem Ayers do that this season. Wow. I tried to throw the slant on the weak side, and the last thing you're thinking is that the defensive end is going to get in the way. But Akeem Ayers with his tremendous athletic ability as we saw earlier in the game the play he made against Oregon very similar right there and that's just tremendous hands and tremendous awareness to, to catch that ball and tremendous play. Well UCLA will go for two to try and stretch the lead to seven with six minutes to go in the fourth quarter now the second time Akeem Ayers has picked the ball off for a touchdown this season. Low snap, mishandled. Still good for two. Nelson Rosario settles down 
That makes it a seven point game as Prince fumbled the snap but maintained his composure. Akeem Ayers back in October against Oregon. Nate Costa in the back of his own end zone has the ball snatched out of midair. Ayers not only intercepts the ball but somehow manages to come down inbounds for a touchdown. But what did he just do to Vaughn Charlton? The second time this year Ayers with a huge defensive score. 2010 Rose Bowl game, Ohio State, Oregon, New Year's Day on ABC. Is it the fact that our vehicles have the highest expected resale value of any luxury brand that makes them so impressive? Or is it the fact that we have the only full line of five-star safety rated sedans? Or is it both? Test drive any Acura at the Drive Home Safely for the Holidays event. Take advantage of attractive lease rates on the 2010 Acura TSX for well-qualified customers. Look, I don't want to work forever. Then we need to figure this out now. Our nest egg took a real hit. What's that website your friend mentioned? Retirementredzone.com. That's it, from Prudential. Yeah. She talked to her financial advisor about what she learned there. Said it really helped her get back on track. Oh, I like that. Help get your plan back on track. Watch our educational video at retirementredzone.com. The site for the critical years before and after retirement. Maybe I can retire after all. <laughs> now you're talking. Click retirementredzone.com, then talk to your financial professional. If your credit card debt is out of control, if you're in over your head dealing with monthly payments, there's powerful information you need to know about the government's bailout of credit card companies. If you have more than $10,000 in credit card debt, you have the right to settle that debt for a fraction of what you owe with monthly payments you can afford. Credit card companies have been given billions and need to clean their books once and for all. And that's great news for you. We're Credit Answers. And we'd like to offer you free information that will show you how to settle your credit card debt with payment plans customized for you. Get yours free by calling now. Don't declare bankruptcy. Give us 10 minutes and learn how we have saved our clients millions. For free information on how to settle your credit card debt in the government bailout era, call now. Credit Answers, the answer to your credit card debt. Call 1-800-500-7016. That's 1-800-500-7016. Back in Washington, D.C., and Akeem Ayers with a game-changing play to put his team up seven. Right here he is. He's going to rush. He's going to fall down initially on his rush, and Charlton doesn't see him. Then when he pops up and Charlton tries to throw the slant on the weak side, Ayers just makes a great play, but Charlton never saw him, and sometimes it's better to be lucky than good, and right there he was had a little bit of luck and a lot of good, but uh, either way, a tremendous play by Akeem Ayers. Changing the face of this game for the UCLA Bruins. Ayers only a sophomore. From Los Angeles. And he has the go-ahead score. Short kickoff. Coming down to Brown at about the 14-yard line. A little slow getting ahead of steam forward. And as a result, he's caught at about the 22 or the 23-yard line. Coming up next, the Champs Sports Bowl as Capital One Bowl Week continues. Miami. And Wisconsin in a good matchup ACC against Big Ten on ESPN News. We'll have post game extra from here at the Eagle Bank Bowl. And also if you're watching on ESPN 360.com we'll have the trophy ceremony. And we will carry that for you live on 360 from here at RFK. So stay tuned for that. Does Temple have a rally in them. Lamar McPherson now in a tailback again Bernard Pierce the all everything true freshman tailback. Top 10 rusher in America injured in the second quarter and has not returned here in the second half. End around. Tripped up back at about the 12 yard line was James Nixon. Corey Bosworth makes the stop. Well, a tremendous play on the weak side by Bosworth. If he doesn't make this play, Nixon is still running. He had sole responsibility for contain on the weak side and a great job of getting into the legs. And as a as a defensive end, it's difficult sometimes to bring down a speedy wide receiver, but Bosworth with plenty of athletic ability able to make that play. Brown on second down at 21. Picks up three, maybe four yards. Raheem Moore 
came up and made the stop. Temple scored all 21 of their points in the first half. This is what's happened to them in the second half. Yeah, they really struggled, and you lose Bernard Pierce, and, and UCLA starts playing a little bit better, but uh, not very good on offense in the second half for, for Temple after really dominating the game both through the, the air and on the ground in the first half. And if they want to have any chance of, of pulling out a, an upset here, they need to get some plays in a hurry. Third down and a mile. Tarleton flips it up the sideline, throws it away. So now UCLA with a seven point lead will most likely get the football again near midfield. Well, and that and that drive was doomed by the first down play. You know, Temple offensively is not built uh, to come from behind in the down and distance. You get into a second and 20 situation, and there's no offense in America that's going to have a high percentage of converting that first down on two plays so uh, you know that was a decision a high risk high reward reverse play on first down that hurt that drive for Temple high snap goes over the head of Brownell and out of the back of the end zone what a nightmare this has been for Temple in the second half and that makes it a two possession game Wow a magical season for the Owls after a magical first half in their first bowl game in 30 years has come apart on Al Golden's team in the second half. The high snap for the safety and it's a nine point lead for UCLA. that our vehicles have the highest expected resale value of any luxury brand that makes them so impressive? Or is it the fact that we have the only full line of five-star safety rated sedans? Or is it both? Test drive any Acura at the drive home safely for the holidays event. Take advantage of attractive lease rates on the 2010 Acura TL for well-qualified customers. Appetizers, gentlemen. I'll start with the steak tartare. I'll have the same. Uh, but hold the tartare sauce. The more you save on insurance, the more you'll have for football. Are you in good hands? Most people make resolutions based on what they see on the outside. This year, focus on what's inside and let Cheerios help tackle your cholesterol. Now you could win a free box to get started. So we're shooting in China. No. No. So we're shooting in Argentina. I don't tape this. You're good? Hey, I'm the producer. And just make it happen. No, no, no. And did I mention it's a film about Parisian squirrels who ride bikes? Scooter. Who ride scooters? I like what you're doing very much. My director, he can be a bit... I want to go back to China. ...much. But on tonight's flight, I can just sleep. The new international business class only on American. We know why you fly. Why squirrel hate me? Rick Neuheisel told us how much playing in a bowl game this season means to him and his program. And I think his reactions today indicative of just how much it meant to him to find out that his team got to six and six, winning three out of their last four in the Pac-10, closed out the year with a loss to USC that obviously created some bad blood, the well-publicized back and forth between he and Pete Carroll at the end of that game when Pete Carroll was trying to run out the clock Rick Neuheisel called a timeout so Pete Carroll had his team go out and throw a touchdown pass to make it a three touchdown lead and after the safety here's the free kick for Temple and maybe an onside kick might be their only chance. Well, they'll send it as deep as they can Austin fields it on the dead run at about the 32 yard line. And he's brought down at the 37 yard line. Down to Rob Stone. 
Hey guys, inspiration comes at the oddest times. This is a, a t-shirt Coach Neuheisel made, our finest hour. He came up with the idea in the midst, in October during that five game losing streak. He said, Rob, I was having some problems sleeping. So I woke up, turned on the TV, Apollo 13 was on. He started watching and came to the scene where, where things were looking great, where that module was gonna blow up and NASA was panicking. And then one of the characters came out and said, with all due respect, sir, I think this will be our finest hour. There's a reason he has the phrase relentlessly positive painted in the locker room, guys. He knew that there would be some adversity this season, and it's some adversity today as well, but he always aims to keep the focus on the positive with this program. All right, Rob, thanks very much. I believe it was Ed Harris playing the part of Gene Kranz that he was looking for there. Wow. <laughs> I have a lot of time on my hands when I'm on the road. <laughs> two yard gain on first down for Moline, and now Temple down two scores with 4.09 to go. And now it looks like Al Golden's going to start spending his timeouts. Again, coming up next, we'll have Miami and Wisconsin in Orlando. Brad Nessler, Todd Blackledge, and Holly Rowe on hand to bring you the Champ Sports Bowl. And Ja'Cory Harris, a roller coaster season for Miami sophomore quarterback. But he has a lot of football still out in front of him. Brian, we saw him a couple times this season. And a 23 touchdown pass year, 3,100 yards, nearly 60% completions. I mean, what, what steps do you feel Miami took forward this year with Ja'Cory Harris? Well, I think he, he played tremendous early in the season, it was actually in the Heisman uh, discussion, but these 17 interceptions were what really hurt him as the year progressed on, and we had him three or four times, and uh, his tremendous talent around him on offense, the receiving core in Miami is uh, second to none, I think, in, in college football, and Ja'Cory Harris has benefited from that. Lean on second and eight. Moves the pile. About two yards shy of a first down. Al Golden calls Temple's second timeout. Jaquan Jarrett made the stop. And what a week this could be for Temple Sports. Obviously, they are struggling in their bowl game, but their basketball team in the top 20. And Saturday afternoon at 5.30, we'll have the game for you on ESPN2. They will entertain number one Kansas. And Temple has been terrific this season. Already beat Villanova when they were a top five team. Seaton all undefeated. They beat them as well. They found a star in Juan Fernandez, who's had 22 points a game in his last couple. But a chance to see, again, Xavier Henry who might be the best freshman in America for Kansas. He and John Wall kind of battling it out right now as to which might be the best. And the Morris Twins are now sophomores, Marcus and Marquis. And they played most of their high school basketball outside of one prep year in New Jersey. They're from Philadelphia, and they'll be back in Philadelphia. So ESPN2 on Saturday at 5.30, number one Kansas against number 19 Temple. Temple's football team here in the Eagle Bank Bowl down by two scores selling out calling those last two timeouts can they get the ball back a keeper for Prince and he's got the first down the quarterback draw for Kevin Prince moves the chains oh, and at, at what price you know it looked like he went down hard there and he is not moving his right shoulder the shoulder that he separated his AC joint a, a month ago and uh, got to give him the uh, credit for being tough and getting in there and putting his shoulder down and getting the first down but when he comes down right there on that shoulder again just like uh, he did in the original injury when that right shoulder hits the ground and somebody's on top of you you're susceptible to that AC injury and looks like he re aggravated I've had that I've had that three times in my career on both shoulders and it is painful. Well, he is in an amount of pain right now. Kevin Prince as you said Brian has had a tough year. It goes all the way back to the second game of the season against Tennessee when he suffered a fractured jaw on this play in the end zone. He would have his jaw wired shut for three weeks and would miss a couple of starts. That was a game that UCLA would win and then the AC sprain and mild separation of the right shoulder in the USC game back on Thanksgiving weekend almost exactly a month ago and he is coming off 
And it looks like you're right. That right arm isn't moving at all. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, he probably re-aggravated that injury. And, uh, you know, the, the good news for Kevin Prince is this game seems to be in hand in the last game of the season. And that, that injury he could have a full recovery from. But uh, not the way that you want to end your season with an injury. Well, it doesn't look like he's hurt too bad now that he's gotten to the sideline. So Kevin Kraft who went one and one as a starter in the two games that Kevin Prince was unable to start the senior will come on and play out the last three and a half minutes the last gas really for Temple goes out the window after they gave up that last first down and now Moline goes to work a nine yard game. Capital One Bowl Week continues on ESPN tomorrow another pair of bowl games first at 430 Eastern. It's the Falcons of Bowling Green taking on the Vandals of Idaho and the Rhodes Humanitarian Bowl. Check the Eagles and then at 8 Eastern, number 20 Arizona, and number 22 Nebraska. The Wildcats and Cornhuskers at the Pacific Life Holiday Bowl. Capital One Bowl Week on ESPN and ESPN360.com comes up tomorrow with two more games for you. Moline breaks a tackle. All the way down to the 25 yard line. Back to Reese. They're just getting things cranked up. Bowl week continues. Ja'Cory Harris. Big plays all season long. 23 touchdown passes. Third in the nation of completions of 25 yards or longer. The U taking on the W. Miami and Wisconsin in the Champ Sports Bowl. All right, Reese, we'll get you there when we're done with the Eagle Bank Bowl. A frigid afternoon here at RFK in Washington, but the Bruins living up to their nickname. I think the Bruins would do well in cold weather, and the team from Southern California comes out here and owns the second half against Temple. And now flags down. Number three, offense. Five-yard penalty remains first down. It's nice to see a couple of the seniors for UCLA get in and get some playing time. Jason, Kevin Kraft, sorry, the quarterback number three, a senior. He's played quite a bit of football for UCLA over the last three years, getting an opportunity to get some snaps. And the and halfback, Shane Moline, uh, was the offensive MVP this season for UCLA on offense and finishing out, finishing out his career uh, with a good game here on the road in the bowl game with a good performance. Moline for two yards. And it looks like Al Golden will spend his last time out. So with two minutes to go in the fourth quarter. And this obviously is a big game for both programs, not just for Temple because of the history of their program, but talking to Rick Neuheisel, he said two things about how important he thought the Eagle Bank Bowl was this West, this last week. Just taking a step as a program, getting back to 500, playing in the postseason, and also, and you can speak to this, a former player, how important the spring is, and you basically double up your offseason practices by getting ready to play in a bowl game. That's right. The, the bowl game practices are so important for these coaches to get a look at some of the younger players on this team. Outside of spring ball, that's the most important practices during the year that you can have to develop younger players. And as UCLA competes with the USC's out in California for recruits, it's also a chance to get on TV and get in front of some of those recruiting and UCLA this year played 36 underclassmen in their games 24 of those underclassmen freshmen Moline up the middle to about the 24 yard line and the loss today and that certainly looks like what we're going to have for Temple should not diminish the accomplishments of Al Golden's program as we said their first bowl appearance in 30 years nine wins the most since that same season. It's their first winning year in two decades. And the nine wins all came in a row. The longest win streak in well over 30 years. Seven and one in the conference. Tied for first in the MAC East. It got Al Golden the MAC Coach of the Year Award. And so as a man who was a disciple of Joe Paterno, played tight end for Joe Bob Penn State. 
Play action, a bootleg. Down the sideline goes Kraft, reaching for the first down marker. And he might have it. It is a first down, and that will allow UCLA to simply take a knee. And unfortunately for Temple, they had to play the second half without their star, Bernard Pierce. And, and the, the, the whole complexion of the game changed when, when Bernard Pierce went to the sideline. And despite the efforts of Val Golden and, and of Temple and their energy and, and effort, when you lose your star on offense, it, it affects you. And they were not able to overcome that. And despite the fact that Al Golden has had a tremendous year at Temple, not the way he wanted to go out. Well, this the scene just a moment ago. He knows what's coming. He said, bring it on, boys. It's cold, <laughs> but I volunteer. He didn't try to get away. <laughs> Can't be cold, any colder than he already is, right? <laughs> So UCLA travels across the country to Washington, D.C., and they cap a 6-6 six and six season with their seventh win, Temple. Unfortunately, without their star, Bernard Pierce can't muster up enough to hold off UCLA in the second half. 30-21, to 21, UCLA wins the Eagle Bank Bowl. And let's go down to Rob. Well, Coach, what does this win mean for your program at its juncture right now? Well, you know, it's a long way back. It's a long way back to the top, but it's, it's, it's a step in the right direction. I was really proud of the way the kids came back down 21-7, cold, can't get any footing. Lots of reasons to say, you know what, it's just not our day. And that wasn't them. They, came, they found a way to come back. We played real dominant uh, defensively in the second half. That, that fourth down stop down in the red zone was key. You know, I'm just really proud of them. We got a lot of work to do to get all the way where we want to go, but uh, this is a good, this is a, this is a fun night. We need to get it done. Second half defensive shutout. What was the difference between the two halves defensively? Coaches made some good changes in, at, at halftime, but uh, you know, a resolve. You know, we got some great kids. They they came out and they played uh, really hard in the second half. And you know, this side of the field down here is just like ice. So we can keep them down there. You're going to keep them down there for a while. Speaking of ice, did you really think you were going to get the post game shower? You know, they started talking to me. Courtney Viney came over and started saying, hey, Coach, I got to talk. He never talks to me, <laughs> so I knew something was up. But you know what? This On a night like this, it feels pretty good. Yeah, yeah. We'll see you say that in another minute. Coach, right, congratulations. Man. Happy New Year. So the Eagle Bank Bowl champions, Rick Neuheisel, and the UCLA Bruins as they outlast Temple in the second half. Coming up next, we'll have the Champs Sports Bowl for you. You can tune over to ESPN News for a post-game extra and for live coverage of the trophy ceremony down on the field, log on to ESPN360.com. For Brian Greasy, Rob Stone, and our whole crew, I'm Bob Wachusen. So long from the Eagle Bank Bowl in Washington. Now let's go to Reese Davis, back in our cozy, warm studios. All right, Bob, Brian, thank you very much. Just getting things cranked up on this night. Chris Borland and the Badgers going to take on Miami. Kickoff just over 20 minutes away in the Champs Sports Bowl. Physical, old school football. It's pounded. Now that's how you close something out. That's just pure speed. And boy, he got belted. What a move he just put on. Capital One Bowl Week rolls on with the big play Canes taking on the bruising Badgers of Wisconsin. The Champs Sports Bowl coming next on ESPN. I am the champion.
Uh, the gift that keeps on giving bowl week. We're headed to the Wisconsin-Miami game coming up in just a little bit. Reese Davis alongside my Hall of Fame partners, Lou Holtz and Mark May. We'll hear from them coming up momentarily. The drama that continues to dominate the college football landscape right now in Lubbock, Texas. Texas Tech head coach Mike Leach is seeking a temporary restraining order that would allow him to coach the Red Raiders in the Valero Alamo Bowl against Michigan State on January 2nd. A hearing has been set for tomorrow morning at 8.30 Central Time, at which time it's expected to see whether Leach can be granted that restraining order. As you know, Leach has been suspended as head coach at Texas Tech amid allegations that he mistreated Adam James, a wide receiver who had been diagnosed with a concussion. James is the son of ESPN analyst Craig James. James is alleged to have been put into a small dark room on two occasions and kept secluded away from the team during the practice time. Mike Leach has disputed some of the characterizations of these accusations, and his attorney has been speaking on his behalf. He wasn't isolated. He had a certified, licensed trainer supervising a graduate student who was supervising an undergraduate student, three folks watching him, and Mike... Sure, Mike asked was he able to stand, and he was. The university questioned the doctor. The doctor put out a statement. The statement said that um, as far as he was concerned, the doctor thought Mike's actions helped him. And in fact, part of that statement that was uncovered by ESPN's Joe Shad, which uh, Ted Liggett referred to, Dr. Michael Fye wrote in a memo that no additional risk or harm were imposed on Adam James by what he was asked to do by Mike Leach. Here are some of the contract details for Leach. Perhaps the most notable one is the one in the middle. Leach is due, per terms of his contract, to receive an $800,000 bonus if he is still head coach on December 31st. However, multiple sources have told Joe Shad that Leach and his team expect that Texas Tech will attempt to fire him for cause in the very near future. We not had any word from Texas Tech on that yet. That is just what sources are telling our Joe Shad. Earlier tonight on SportsCenter, Craig James, whose son Adam is in the middle of this controversy, our analyst spoke with Steve Levy. Now, the player in the middle of all this is Texas Tech wide receiver Adam James. His father is former NFL player and current ESPN college analyst Craig James, who joins us now live on SportsCenter. Craig, first of all, you just heard from Mike Leach's attorney what he had to say. What would be your response to that? Well, Steve, obviously this is a very um, delicate situation. Uh, our family really is, is trying to support Adam right now through this. We, we admire him for the courage that it's taken for him to step forward with this. Uh, it, you know, he sustained a concussion a couple of weeks ago. The doctor did diagnose him with a concussion. It's the actions that Mike took following that against Adam that are really in question here. Those are the reasons that, that Texas Tech, the university, took them very serious and they acted quickly on those to go out and to investigate the allegations and, uh, and, and apparently they're ongoing as well. So uh, it's not a good situation for anybody. Craig, are we missing something? Has something been left out of the story? Has anything else happened to your son on that day in question? No, I think, I think all of the reports that ESPN have been putting out there have been accurate. Uh, you know, it, it is an ongoing investigation. Uh, we believe as a family that Texas Tech will be fair. They will be thorough. They're going to do what's right to protect Adam and his teammates. And that's what's important here, especially in this era of concussions. We know how sensitive those are. So we're looking for a fair and thorough investigation. We believe in that. Uh, we believe in Texas Tech. I've got two kids who go to school at Texas Tech. We love Texas Tech. It's just about doing what's right. And, um, and, and that's, that's what Texas Tech University is trying to do right now. Craig, take us through the day for you. I mean, you get the phone call. Adam comes over and tells you about what happened. What was your immediate reaction when you first heard the way he was treated? And then what did you next do with that news? Steve, I'm a dad now. You know, I, you know, everybody knows me as an ESPN guy and a football guy, but I'm a dad. And when my wife and I heard about it the first time, we had no idea how to respond. The second time it came to us, we really wanted to protect, help protect Adam uh, from further uh, things that could go against him. 
Uh, it's just, it, this is not common sense, the, the tactics and, and the tools and the method by which he was placed under uh, following a doctor's diagnosis of a concussion. So I was concerned as a dad, as my wife was, our family, and that was our number one issue. Uh, Craig, you were portrayed, speaking of, of, of yourself as a dad, you were portrayed today on Outside the Lines as a helicopter dad, meaning that you're always hovering around. These were the words from the attorney from Mike Leach, and also that your son was a disgruntled player, not getting enough playing time. What would be your reaction to those statements? Steve, you know me, man. I hang around and hover around a lot of football programs. Um, it is absolutely not true. Uh, this is all about Adam sustaining a concussion and the actions that took place against Adam after those con after the concussion was diagnosed. Has nothing to do with any of those other things. That is has nothing to do with what we're doing here. Well, the James family has made its case. Leach's attorneys making their case now. Let's put this aside as best we can in terms of whose case you believe or whatever. I think one of the most pertinent factors, Mark, is if Texas Tech were committed to keeping Mike Leach, is it reasonable to say that they would have sought some other disciplinary measure if they thought that that were necessary as opposed to suspending him? Does this now make it untenable for him to continue as head coach in your estimation? Yes, it does. In my opinion, it definitely does. <clears throat> in a situation, a coach like this, maybe you're fined. Maybe a letter's written and put in your file. But to go to this length to suspend the coach before their biggest game of the year outside of playing Texas in a bowl game on a national stage, they are sending a message to Mike Leach and everyone else out there that right now they're laying the groundwork, they're covering their tracks, that they're probably going to end up firing Mike Leach, in my opinion. What I wonder is, <clears throat> is this the main reason? And why is Mike Leach playing doctor? If a young man has a concussion, that's up to the trainer. The trainer and the doctors handle that. That's your coach. When you're OK and they clear you, you come back and I'll tell you what to do. Here's something else, though, that really bothers me. Mike Leach has been the head football coach at Texas Tech for 10 years. Now, make no mistake about it. He's a great offensive football coach. Did a great job as offense assistant at Oklahoma. But for 10 years, he's won there, and there's never been one case like this. Nobody's ever accused him of abusing players and anything. So I just say it, something doesn't make sense here. I, I need more information before I can comment intelligently, but then again, that's the case with most of the time. Well, what makes a little bit of sense to me is there's $800,000 due to Mike Leach if he's the but, head coach of Texas Tech on Thursday. But, but, money, does come, but they agreed to that before this. I mean, right. I, I don't but, think that would be the primary motivation. Well, not the well, primary hey. motivation, but that's got to be part of it. That's got to be part of the entire picture. When you're making a decision like this, if you just signed a coach to a five-year deal for $12.7 million last season because he did a heck of a job, then look it. A situation like this, you're not going to suspend him before the biggest game of the year that's on the biggest stage. Why do they want to get rid of him? And if they did want to get rid of him, why are they doing it in this manner? Is this the reason or are there other reasons? That's, that's all. I wish somebody from Texas Tech would come forth and speak about it. But I know as a football coach, I can't understand why a coach would act like a doctor. You have no jurisdiction whatsoever over an injured football player. I can't understand it. I just think the reason why we're not getting a lot of information from both parties is because the lawyers are involved. Well, that's, that, that certainly is a big part of it, and you have to remember and that... And you act like a lawyer. Like I, a lawyer. You really do. <laughs> you know, for the players all the time against the coaches. Well, last year, uh, Texas, some quarters of their administration held some uh, hard feelings toward Leach because he visited with the University of Washington about that opening and supposedly was interested in some other ones. Didn't let them know, according to them, and, and perhaps uh, some lingering bad feelings. And, and that's That's, nonsense. That, that, that's not right. I, I tell you right, if you give a, your coach, the, the school has to give the other school permission to talk to him or say, no, I've had schools call our athletic director and say, no, you can't talk to him. He's under contract. I never found out about it. But if he goes, you shouldn't hold that against him. Uh, yeah, I think there was a dispute uh, between the two as to whether he had to inform them. But that's all water under the bridge, but it gives you a little context that perhaps um, maybe how much equity has been built up perhaps when things like this come up. We'll keep you up to date on what goes on with the Mike Leach story. Again, just a reminder, there is a court hearing set in the 99th District Court in Lubbock, 8.30 Central Time tomorrow morning as Leach seeks a temporary restraining order that would allow him to coach in the Alamo Bowl against Michigan State. Rick Neuheisel and Al Golden perfectly free to coach in the Eagle Bank Bowl for UCLA and Temple. Temple in their first bowl game. Look at Brian Price made it in the cold weather. Put on a parka.
<laughs> you don't think that shows some UCLA toughness? I think that shows you're nuts. <laughs> uh, the first half, UCLA played in a parka. <laughs> Vaughn Charlton hits Steve Maneri. Temple up 7-0. And Kevin Prince to Nelson Rosario. Well, this is just a great concentration on the pass. Fairly well played by the oh, defender. Oh. Takes it in, ties it up, 7 all. You know, Temple had a 21-10 lead at the half. They have that lead in the third quarter. Prince, Terrence Austin, goodbye. And now the Bruins are back in at 21-17. Fourth quarter, I want you to keep an eye on Akeem Ayers' mayday. He's yeah. a defensive end for the Bruins. Charlton trying to pass it. Is that number 10? Oh, he, look, he fell. He have, fell. We, have we seen this before? We have. In fact, he made, I think it was a better catch. He made an interception when he's actually in the end zone against Oregon and got both feet down in the back line. Ricks, no, no, yeah, well, go ahead. Yeah, why, why not? not? We came 2,400 miles for this. Go ahead, douse him. Hey, you know what? You think that New Heisel's motivated to get UCLA to the Rose Bowl? You get doused with ice in about 20 degree <laughs> weather or whatever. <laughs> Fellas, that ice is going to feel better in Pasadena. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 30 to 21, UCLA finishes with a winning record and Temple. First bowl appearance since 1979. I know it wasn't a win, but Al Golden's done a wonderful job. But in the second half, the Bruins really flexed their muscle, Lou. They, they dominated the game. They really did. They uh, came out. They played great on defense. They stayed focused on offense. They made the plays when they had to. I'm not sure he would have intercepted that pass if he not slipped down, because when he slipped down, the quarterback didn't see him. I think what really hurt Temple in the second half was losing their all-star running back, Bernard Pierce. In the second half, he had over 1,300 yards coming. He's a true freshman coming into this game. Had a nice half in the first half, but by losing your best football player, I think that really hurt Temple. That was our first bowl game of the day. We've got another one coming up in the Champ Sports Bowl. Miami getting set to take on Wisconsin. How do you see this one? What's the key? Ja'Cory Harris protecting the football. He has 17 interceptions on the season, and that's tied for the lead in the FBS with Jevin Sneed from Mississippi. But the key is Mark Whoop, the offensive coordinator, has done a fabulous job with, with Ja'Cory Harris thus far this year, except for the turnovers. If he can protect the ball, he should have a big game tonight. I think it's going to come down to how well West Coast plays. They played this game last year and lost to Florida State 42-13. Let me tell you this. Last three games, Miami's given up zero rushing touchdowns. Last seven games, only two. And Wisconsin's a running team. You know, and John Clay, 14th Ooh. in the nation in rushing. However, against the two ranked opponents the Badgers have faced this year, his yards per game down roughly 50 per game. They haven't been able to get him going against the better defenses. Will they be able to do so against Miami? The champ sports bowl just about ready to go, as is Brad Nessler. Brad? Randy Shannon has had his best season so far as head coach of the Miami Hurricanes. They enter this game at 9-3. And, and they head into the Florida Citrus Bowl Stadium on a cool night in Orlando to take on the power of Wisconsin of the Big Ten and their offensive player of the year, John Clay. It's been a fun time for the Badgers and the Hurricanes, but now the fun is over. It's time to circle the wagons as the ACC and the Big Ten clash in the Champ Sports Bowl next. ESPN's college football primetime brings us to the Champ Sports Bowl in Orlando. Cool, clear night, and the Miami Hurricanes haven't played a bowl game in their home state in almost six years. Tonight, they get their chance as they take on the Wisconsin Badgers. Happy holidays. Welcome to Orlando, everybody. I'm Brad Nessel along with Todd Blackledge. Partner, you and I have been around here for about three days now. And in the land of theme parks, Disney theme parks, the theme so far for these two teams is let's go get no number 10 on the you, season. You know what? 10 is only one more than nine. Both these teams with nine wins. But it's huge because that double-digit win sounds better and looks better to potential recruits that both these teams are pursuing to alumni and donors.
owners of both these schools, and it adds more juice and motivation to the offseason conditioning program. So winning the 10th game is very, very significant for both these teams. Wisconsin hasn't beaten a ranked team this year, and they hope that would propel them maybe into the preseason top 15 next year. Same thing for Miami. You talk about preseason next year. I would think a guy on the short list for the preseason player of the year in the ACC is in this game, yeah. and a guy that's already a player of the year for the Wisconsin Badgers is in this game. Two very talented sophomores for Wisconsin. Their tailback, John Clay, a big, powerful downhill runner who was really on a roll at the end of the season, averaged 136 yards per game and scored nine touchdowns. Miami's quarterback, Ja'Cory Harris, a guy who has great poise. He has tremendous arm talent. He can make any throw you want. Sometimes he trusts his arm a little bit too much and throws it where he shouldn't, has had some problems with interceptions. But when he takes care of the football, he is as good as anybody in the country at the quarterback position. Both teams come in having won four of their last five. Let's go down to third member of our team on the field is Holly Rowe. Holly. Well, Todd, you said Ja'Cory Harris is pretty good, and he's even better when he has some protection up front. That may be an issue tonight with the new left tackle, especially because Wisconsin's defensive front is very good. O'Brien Schofield, their end, is second in the country in tackles for loss with 22. And, oh, you better know where number 44 is. That's Chris Borland, a linebacker. This kid does it all. He's a true freshman. He has an interception this year, a punt return, a punt block, four sacks. He's second on the team in tackles for loss, five force fumbles. And, oh, yeah, he's kicked three PATs, and he's the backup punter tonight. So watch out for number 44. All right, we've got a throwback as we're almost ready to throw it into the new year. Champ Sports Bowl, happy holidays. Going to break. B.O.B. gets us there, and then we'll kick it off in a minute. Could switching to GEICO really save you 15% or more on car insurance? Is Ed too tall, Jones? Too tall. Oh. I'm just gonna guess to me. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Does your phone do searches? Does your phone do searches, for example, the word human? Does your phone do searches for human on the web? Then Google Maps for places named human? Your contacts for any friends named human, which would be weird if you had one. Even your music for songs you forgot you downloaded? Droid does. Search all digital creation. In a world of doesn't, Droid does. This is ESPN's presentation of Capital One Bowl Week. Yesterday, the pep rallies for both the Hurricanes of Randy Shannon and the Wisconsin Badgers, led by fourth-year head coach Brett Bielema, who had a special request. I don't think it's cold here. I want it to snow tomorrow. <laughs> well, it's not going to do that. It's a clear night. But it is chilly, 49 degrees. Yesterday, the winds were very strong. Thankfully, they have died down, or the kicking game would have been a problem tonight for both teams. Red Bielema, his fourth year, as I mentioned, as head coach. His first two years, 21 and 5. He won 12 games in his rookie season as the head coach in Madison, taking over for Barry Alvarez, the Hall of Famer, who will go in the Rose Bowl Hall of Fame later this week. Randy Shannon been with his program for more than 20 years as a player, assistant, and now head coach in his third season. This is his best year so far with nine wins. Great crowd. Everybody revved up. As the Wisconsin Badgers of the Big Ten, their losses to two BCS teams in Ohio State and Iowa, and then a heartbreaker in the Big Ten finale to Northwestern. Miami, they lost in overtime to Clemson. Clemson paid, played in the ACC championship game. They beat Georgia Tech, the ACC champs. Their other two setbacks, Virginia Tech and North Carolina. Miami won the toss. They want the football. That means Philip Welch will tee it up for the Badgers. 
And you talk about both these teams with three losses, and it's pretty obvious for both teams when they lost games, they also lost the turnover battle pretty significantly. Right. And that that is a huge factor tonight because of the layoff from the end of the season to the bowl game. Which team takes care of the football most consistently? Both coaches mentioned that to us, the turnover story, and who can tackle better. Sometimes you get a little bit lazy yeah. in that three weeks to a month between the end of the regular season and bowl time. Welch to kick. Greg Cooper and Mike James back deep for Miami. Here we go. Cooper will take it at the four. And it's an end around coming the other way. Miami with a little razzle dazzle right off the bat. Sam Shields might take it. He's going. Touchdown. going to be celebration but I don't think it matters to the U fans right now illegal block in the back number 38 on the receiving team Whoa. that penalty is 10 yards from the spot of the foul first down take it back Corey. those flags were down at about yeah. the 11 yard line Corey Nelms is the guy who's getting an earful right now from Randy Shannon. Sam Shields is the fastest guy on the Miami team. Boy, that couldn't have been it, was it? It had to happen later on. I think it had to happen later towards the end of the play. Right. Right there. Right there. And, and it the, was unnecessary. At about the, about the six-yard yeah. line, it looked like. Shields was, was five yards ahead of that defender, and he's the fastest guy in the Miami team. Wow. So what would have been a 97-yard touchdown is at the 16-yard line. They might get in one snap anyway. They do. Touchdown. Well, if at first you don't succeed or you have a penalty, <laughs> give it to Greg Cooper. He gets a nice block on the outside by Leonard Hankerson, his wide receiver. Now, does he step out of bounds before he gets to the pylon or not? Not there. Nope. Not there. <laughs> Extra point. Matt Bosher in to try to make it 7 0 Miami. And does. <laughs> well, we had fireworks right after the national anthem or during. And we have fireworks in the first 20 some seconds of the Champ Sports Bowl. Cooper for the touchdown. 7 0 Canes. Sports, where sport lives. Look at those rims. Look at that belt line. That stance. That grill. It's not just American craftsmanship. It's an American craft manship. It's a 5.7 liter, 368 horsepower, 25 miles per gallon, Hemi V8, get me out of here, manship. Four pounds by reducing my daily calories and replacing my usual fast food with Taco Bell's drive-through diet. That's seven delicious items all under nine grams of fat. When I decided to trim down, I knew I had to be realistic with myself. I didn't want to cut out my fast food, so I started choosing fresco items from the drive-through diet menu. These results aren't typical, but for me, they're fantastic. The Taco Bell drive-through diet. Hear Christine's amazing story and learn all about it at drivethroughdiet.com. Itchy dry scalp could be your shampoo. Now there's a new Selsun Blue just for itchy dry scalp. Strong itch fighters target the source of scalp itch, while five moisturizers keep hair healthy. No more itch. New Selsun Blue itchy dry scalp. Got a clue? Get the blue. 
Hi, I'm Rob Broderson, the Vice President of Marketing for Champ Sports. As a leading sports specialty retailer in the mall, we offer the latest styles in athletic footwear, apparel, hats, and accessories from all your favorite brands. We take pride in our sports heritage and are proud to present to you the 6th Annual Champ Sports Bowl. On behalf of Champ Sports and our over 6,000 employees across North America, we'd like to wish you and your family a very happy and healthy new year. And thanks for watching the Champ Sports Bowl. Cooper with a 16-yard touchdown after what would have been a kick return for a score. Here's another look at a split screen. It appears that his knee might have been down at the one-yard line. And those are from two different angles at the exact same time. And then he falls into the pylon on the tackle at the goal line. It's academic right now at 7-0 Miami. So Matt Bosher will tee it up. And that's one of those deals I look at I say the, the, the kickoff return was so well conceived and so well executed and they get the cheap penalty yeah. that takes the touchdown away. You know what? They deserve a touchdown there. So two exciting plays already. Let's see if Wisconsin's got an answer. David Gilray back deep for the Badgers. You see Miami in unique uniforms tonight. All white. But they mix their colors of orange and green even on their shoes. One green, one orange. Gilray from the three. Got out maybe to the 23. Ray Ray Armstrong made the tackle. So Wisconsin a little bit shell-shocked in the opening 20 seconds. Scott Tolzien takes the field. Quarterback was a question mark coming into the season for the Badgers. This kid's answered the call pretty well. It really has, and he was kind of not expected to be in the hunt. You know, when the whole thing started in August, he was the third team guy. They had a talented freshman they were talking about, Dustin Shearer, the senior who had finished the year last year. But Tolzien is the guy who came out of the pack and uh, really played well. Play. Cuts outside, big gear, a stiff arm on first down as he got it out for five or six before DeMarcus Van Dyke made the stop. Let's take a look at Wisconsin's offense in their starting lineup. And as always, a big group with Karimi and Frederick, Moffitt, Zietler, and Oglesby. They blind out the sun, even though the sun's not shining. Clay, the player of the year in the conference, tune and Gilreath, the wideouts, and really two very talented tight ends, especially Garrett Graham, who's the all Big Ten tight end. Second down at four. Play again. Work in the middle of that Miami defense, and he's very close to the first down. Speaking of which, take a look at the Canes. They'll rotate about eight guys on their defensive fronts. The one starting Smith, Holmes, Joseph, and Bailey. McCarthy and Sharpton and Ray Buchanan, the linebackers. Brandon Harris, an all-conference corner with Shields. We already saw his speed. Phillips and Telemac, the safeties. First down is where Wisconsin has gotten a lot of big plays out of their passing game because of their ability to run and run play action. On first down, Clay puts both hands around that football, as you saw, as he picked up about three. He's not very fumble prone. One of the most important ones he had this year, though, helped Northwestern beat Wisconsin this year. But he's been very careful with the football overall. He's listed as 248 pounds. He's probably over 250 at this point, but uh, he's wide. I mean, he is thick, oh, man. you know, and then you think about tackling him when he gets his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage. That is a real load coming at you. Second down and eight. Colzine, his first throw. Quickly for the tight end, short of the first down, but got it to Garrett Graham. Let's take a look at our impact players tonight. Garrett Graham, right on cue. Seven touchdown receptions to lead the team. A rather little used wide receiver, but keep your eye on this kid tonight, the freshman, Craig Appleton. Defensively for Miami, Allen Bailey. He'll put pressure on Tolzien tonight. Leads the team in sacks and tackles for loss. Appleton's in the lineup. That's him in motion. Play on a 
another first down. Keeps his legs driving, follows those big eaters, especially Travis Frederick, who pulled around to lead the way. A lot of shifting there right before the start of that play. They got an overload situation, more blockers than Miami had defenders. And right now it looks like Gabe Karimi, their starting left tackle, is down. Junior out of Cottage Grove, Wisconsin, one of the mainstays on their line, a 325-pounder. You can see he's got braces on both knees, but he is in some pain. Brett Bielema said, you know, he had really been banged up towards the end of the year, and just having some time off here before the bowl was great for him. He was feeling better coming into this game than he'd felt for about the last month of the season, but uh, they're taking a look at that right leg right now. The Shearer will come in to take that spot. Karimi and John Moffitt, who is playing center tonight, number 74, a pair of juniors, both first team all Big Ten offensive linemen for Wisconsin. So uh, a critical injury right now for the Badgers. Boy. They go 325, 336, 320, 317. And 310 across their front wall. And that's been a staple of Wisconsin football for a long time, especially since Barry Alvarez took over and they started having thousand yard rushers virtually every season. So just when Wisconsin had started to get their offense in gear with back to back first downs by John Clay to move it out to the 43 yard line. You'll see on the left of the screen 68 Karimi and you get rolled up on so many times in that area and that's what happened. Yeah. He is up and trying to come off without help. There's not too many trainers that can help a guy that big anyway but they're there for assistance. So we hope that uh, Gabe's going to be OK maybe can even come back but it's a pretty stiff legged walk over to the Badger sideline right now. Meanwhile it'll be first down. You know, and you wonder why so many linemen today in college football wear those braces, even if they don't have knee problems. It's just for simply that, you yep. know, plays like that that you can't protect yourself, and you hope that just gives you a little extra protection uh, in the mass of bodies in there in the line of scrimmage. First down, Badgers from their own 43. Yoreef, they fake the handoff on the end around, and it's just Clay plowing ahead right now. Out to the 46, maybe the 47 yard line. Joe Joseph made the stop. You mentioned John Clay and his size, and they list him at 249. You said he's all at 250, if not more than that. And at the champs' luncheon the other day, he was at the table next to me just with sweat bottoms and a white Wisconsin t shirt. And I thought he was a defensive lineman when he walked in. That's how big he is. He's filling out that 32 now. Yeah. He fills it out a little differently than P.J. Hill used to. P.J. Uh -huh. needed bigger pants than John does, if you get my meaning. Seven play of the drive. Here comes a blitz, and that's going to pay off for McCarthy. Loss of about three. Yeah, that's a big play for Miami because uh, Wisconsin on third down, it's, it's pretty obvious they're successful when it's third and short. They're successful when it's third and medium. When it's third and eight plus, they're not very good. They guessed on the run. They ran a run blitz and got Clay in the backfield to bring up a third and ten situation. And they're only 18 percent, as Todd yep. said, when they get in these kind of situations. Gilry in motion in the shotgun is Tolzien. Has time running out of it. Down he goes. That just took too long. Maybe it's a coverage sack. Maybe Tolzien just couldn't find a guy in that mass of humanity. But he goes down for a big loss, and Wisconsin will have to punt. I think Miami is pretty confident of their matchups on the outside against the wide receivers of Wisconsin. They, they like those matchups. Where they think there's a problem, potentially, is with the tight ends. But when it's third and ten, the tight ends aren't nearly as much of a factor as the wideouts are in your pass game. Brad Norman to punt. Collier waits on the other end. Nice kick. A beauty. He's going to let it go, and if Wisconsin can get down there, they will inside the 10-yard line. Well, he boomed that thing. Boy, well, he did. And it puts Miami in a hole. 57-yard punts.
Pressure got the Tolzien. We'll see if the Wisconsin defense can do its job when we come back. Rapunzel, I'm here to save you. Oh, just a minute. I'm picking a photo or my Capital One credit card. I've gone through so many phases. Oh, maybe this one. <laughs> oh, I miss disco. Oh, this one's good. I'm here, darling. Oh, <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Personalize your card by uploading your own photo at CapitalOne.com. What's in your wallet? Look at those rims. Look at that belt line. That stance. That grill. It's not just American craftsmanship. It's an American craft manship. It's a 5.7 liter, 368 horsepower, 25 miles per gallon, Hemi V8, get me out of here, manship. No time to play. I'm picking a photo for my Capital One credit card. Old man Sutter? Why would I put his picture on my card? Oh. <laughs> nice drawing, but this photo's cuter. Personalize your card by uploading your own photo at CapitalOne.com. <laughs> Lady, what's in your wallet? 911, what's your emergency? Throughout our lives, we encounter new opportunities. At the Hartford, we help you pursue them with confidence by preparing you for tomorrow, by protecting what you have today. You've counted on us for 200 years. Let's embrace tomorrow and with the Hartford behind you, achieve what's ahead of you. ESPN College Football, the Champ Sports Bowl, is brought to you by Champ Sports. For all the latest styles in athletic footwear and apparel, get to Champ Sports, where sport lives. Chrysler and Capital One, what's in your wallet? Miami takes over its own eight-yard line. Ja'Cory Harris has a seven-point lead to play with right now. Speaking of seven, the seven. 3,000 yard passer in Miami history. On first down, leaving out across the 15 yard line, Greg Cooper. So you hear the chance of Coop from the Hurricane fans as he's had two impressive runs a 16 yard touchdown and an eight yarder right there. And Miami's going hurry up right off the bat. Second down, a long one. Might be a double pass here. It is. A nice play by Devin Smith, number 10. Timed it up and came up to knock that ball away from LaRon Bird, the intended receiver. There, but Cooper doing a little bit of everything. And that's third down and short. Javaris James in the lineup. Those two interchange.